Well, we're live here from Flippin' High School. We're doing the Billy Ply Plastic, the girls' version this weekend. Next weekend, we'll be doing the boys' section, but we're going to do pause for the national anthem. Pledge of Allegiance. Well, we're going to skip the Pledge of Allegiance today, and we're going to get started with starting lineups today for Marmaduke. This is going to be the Yellow Summit Panthers senior squad versus the Marmaduke Lady Greyhounds senior basketball team. Bailey Joyner, number 32. She's a senior. She'll start for the Marmaduke Greyhounds. Justice Joyner, number 10. She's also a senior. Mackenzie Hampton, number two. She's also a senior here at Yellville Summit or at uh, Marmaduke. Maddie Taylor, number four. She will be starting for the Marmaduke Lady Greyhounds, and she's a senior. The lone junior on the basketball team for Marmaduke is Lexi Gibson. She's number 33, and she will be starting for the Lady Marmaduke Greyhounds. For the Yellow Summit Lady Panthers, it'll be Abby Methvin, number one, senior. K.J. Moore, senior, number 12. It'll be Hannah Hayward, number five. She's a, she, Her number is 11, or she's a, her number is five, and she is a junior. Sierra Burrow is another junior starter. Her number is number 10. Cameron Mason, a sophomore, the lone sophomore on the squad, number zero. She will be the point guard for the Yelvil Summit Lady Panthers. Yelvil Summit will look to get the ball to K.J. Moore and to Abby Methman. Sierra Burrow is deadly from the outside, and we will see what that's going to come to here in this contest. We want to let you know that this ball game, that this classic will be brought to you today by – North, North Arkansas, or by um, Baxter Medical Regional Center over in uh, Medical Center in Mountain Home. They're on Mountain Home Drive. If you've got to get some bones and joints fixed, that's who you'd want to get out there to see is Baxter Medical Reg Regional Medical Center over on Hospital Drive in Mountain Home. We're about to get this tipped off. It'll be K.J. Moore against number 32, Bailey Joyner. Yevil Summit will control the opening tip. Abby Methman with the ball over to Cameron Mason. Sierra Burrow, she looks to dry, uh, get the ball inside. Couldn't get it there. Back over to Abby Methman from Hannah Hayward. Puts up a three-point shot from the near side and puts it through the bottom of the net. Marmaduke will bring the basketball up the floor. They'll get it back on their end for offense and set up an offense at the top of the key. Justice Joyner has the ball partially knocked away from her. Now she's going to take a shot, and it's going to roll and bounce all around the rim, falls through for to, tie, uh, to uh, get the first two points for the Marmaduke Lady Greyhounds. Cameron Mason brings it across timeline, gets it over to Abby Methvin inside at the free throw line to K.J. Moore over to Mason, puts up a three-point shot. It's no good, rebounded by Bailey Joyner. Justice Joyner brings the ball back up the floor. She'll have the ball almost knocked away by Cameron Mason. Cameron Mason reaches in, tries to steal the ball. A deep three-point shot that's going to hit the front of the rim, bounce off, be rebounded by number 33, Lexi Gibson, put back up and in. They'll take the lead 4-3 to three early in this contest. Methman quickly back up the floor with the basketball. Over to Cameron Mason to Hayward. Hayward puts up another three-point shot from the near side of the floor. It's no good. Rebounded by number two, Mackenzie Hampton. Back up the floor on the left side. Tries to get make a pass. It's stolen by Abby Methvin. Abby Methvin on a runaway breakout. She's going to lay that up and in on the right-hand side, and that'll put the Elvis and Summit Panthers back in the lead 5-4. to 6.08 to play in this contest in this first quarter. Justice Joyner gets the ball over to number four, Maddie Taylor. Back to Joiner, inside to number 32, Bailey Joiner. She puts up a, a weak layup on the on this right side of the rim. It's no good, but they're going to call a foul. They'll call that foul on K.J. Moore, number 12. That's her first foul, first team foul, first foul of the ball game. First free throws up and in for Joiner. She'll get set for her second or second free throw right here. It's up, and it's in. 6-5, Marmaduke leads, Yellow Summit. Mason brings the ball up the floor. She'll cross the timeline. 
set up the offense, tries to get inside, gets it to the free throw line to Moore. Got a whistle, an official's timeout. He wants to check something with the scoring table. The only thing he could possibly be checking was the score. We'll see. He's going over to the Yellville Summit bench to coach now. Coach Melton is the head coach for the Yellville Summit Panthers. Charles Melton is the head coach, and Rick Smith is the head coach for Marmaduke. Yellville Summit will get set to throw this ball in right there in front of the scorer's table or in front of the Marmaduke bench. Mason with the ball over to Hayward. Hayward down to Burrow. Burrow in the corner comes, dribbles it one time, gets it back to Mason. She'll get it over to Methvin, back to Hayward on the other side of the floor. Moore now gets inside, tries to put up a shot. It's knocked away, and it'll be brought back up the floor by Marmaduke. Joiner gets it inside to Bailey Joiner, back out to Justice Joiner. Now the ball's going to be stolen, brought back up the floor. Hayward with the ball at the rim, puts it up. It's no good. Rebounded by Methvin. Foul's going to be called. That foul looks like it's going to be called against number four, Maddie Taylor. And it will send Abby Methvin to the free throw line for two free throws. It'd be the first team foul for Marmaduke. Now each team with one foul in the game. Methvin makes the first free throw. She's set to shoot the second one. Second one is up and hits the rim, bounces off to the left side. She hits one out of the two. Now Joyner brings it back up. Justice Joyner brings it back up, finds McKenzie Joyner. Now the ball almost tipped away by Cameron Mason in the hands of number four, Taylor. She'll get it over to number two, McKenzie Hampton, back to Justice Joyner. She's going to dribble and get down on the baseline, pick up her dribble, get kick the ball back out. Taylor's going to put up a shot. It's no good. Rebounded by number 33, Lexi Gibson. And that makes the score 8-6, to six, Marmaduke Lee Giovo Summit. Burrow with the ball in the corner. She'll get the ball inside to, tries to get it inside to K.J. Moore. Goes off for hands. It'll be picked up by Marmaduke. Brought back up the floor by Justice Joyner. She'll find number four. For a three-point shot, number four is Taylor. Another three-point shot, no good. It's going to go out of bounds off of K.J. Moore. And we're going to have our first substitution coming in for Marmaduke. It'll be, have to see the number, It'll be number 13. And we don't have a number 13 on their roster, so... She's going to take a quick three-point shot, and she's going to make it from the right side of the floor. That'll make the score 11-6. to Five-point lead for Marmaduke over Yellow Summit. Methvin brings the ball back up the floor, drives all the way in the lane, puts up a shot, and it's all good off the glass. She gets in right in front of the rim, puts it up off the glass, and that'll cut the lead to 11-8. to Number 13 with the basketball, back over to number two. Hampton down into the corner to join her. Now Hampton with the basketball. Finds McKenzie join her wide open, and K.J. Moore is going to alter that shot. It'll go off the bottom of the rim, picked up by number 13 for Marmaduke over to Justice Joiner. She puts up a three-point shot that's off the mark and goes out of bounds. It'll be Yellow Summit basketball on the baseline. Mason throws it into Methvin. Full court pressure to Moore, to Hayward. Hayward will let the offense catch up. Over to Mason, back to Moore, Hayward. Cross court to Cobb. Rory Cobb has checked in for Yellow Summit, number 22. K.J. Moore in the lane, puts up a layup, and it hits the, hits the glass and crawls over the rim on the left-hand side. 11-10, to 10, Yellow Summit trails by one. Justice with the ball over to number 13. She looks inside, back over to Justice Joyner. Over to Hampton, back to Joyner. Joyner looks at a three. Now Hampton's going to look at it. 
She's going to put that shot up. It's going to be off the back of the rim. Cobb is going to track down the long rebound. Out to Methvin, over to Mason. It's going to be stolen by Mackenzie Joyner, but it's going to be a double dribble as she was trying to gain control of it. It'll go back to the Yellow Summit Lady Panthers. They'll inbound it underneath their own basketball goal on the baseline. They're actually going to inbound that from the side of the floor in front of the Marmaduke bench. Checking back in will be number four, Maddie Taylor. Methman gets the inbounds pass into K.J. Moore. K.J.'s going to turn and put up a shot. She's not going to make it, but she's going to be hammered at the goal. She's going to the free throw line. That foul will be called. That foul will be called on number four, Maddie Taylor. It's her second personal foul. First shot is up and in. She's going to have one more. Score is all knotted up. The score is all tied up at 11. More second shot is up and just perfect through the bottom of the net. Yevil Summit retakes the lead 12 to 11. Justice Joyner will bring this ball up the center of the floor. Finds number 13. And she'll get the ball back to Justice Joyner. She wanted to take it three. It's no, she's not going to have an opportunity. Then she's going to dribble the ball off of her own feet with a little help from Hayward. Hannah Hayward knocked that ball loose in her hand and she dribbled it off of her own foot when she tried to regain possession. Checking back into the game will be McKenzie Hampton, and number 13 will check out. Mason will throw this in. She gets it into Methvin, back to Mason. She'll bring it across the timeline, heading towards the right side of the floor. Now she stops, goes back to the center, Hayward with the ball. Cobb will look at a three-point shot, pass it, pass on it, and pass the ball to Mason over to Methvin. Methvin back across floor as she gets the ball to Cobb. Now Hayward with the basketball. She looks to pass the ball to K.J. Moore, and it's going to go out of bounds. Justice Joyner brings this ball back up center of the floor from Marmaduke. She looks to set the offense. Now she's going to drive the lane, put up a shot. It's going to be blocked by K.J. Moore. K.J. is going to take a shot to the nose. Doesn't appear to be bleeding, so she's going to stay in this ball game. It'll be out of bounds off of Yellville Summit. Now it's going to be stolen by Methvin. Methvin and Mason out on. They don't have numbers, but Abby's going to take it all the way to the goal and put it up off the left side. Hits the glass and falls through the bottom of the net. 14 to 11, Yellville Summit leads this contest here at the Billy Ply Classic. We've got one minute and 14 seconds remaining in the first period. Justice Joyner puts up a long three-point shot. It's off the rim. Hayward with the rebound. Yellville Summit back down the floor. Mason on the right side, puts up the shot, no good. But she's going to be fouled on the shot, it appears, and go to the free throw line to shoot two. Hayward did have the rebound. Mason will go to the free throw line. It'll be on number 10, Justice Joyner. That'll be her first foul of the game, third team foul in this quarter. Mason makes the first free throw. Maddie Taylor is going to check out and checking in will be Ava Anthony for Marmaduke. Mason gets set for her second free throw. It's up on the front of the rim. No good. It's going to go out of bounds. And it's, they're going to say it went out of bounds off of Yellville Summit. So it'll be Marmaduke basketball. They'll inbound from the baseline. It'll be joiner to joiner. Justice joiner brings it up. Bailey trails on the left side. Justice will... Hand the ball off to Bailey. She's going to drive the lane, put up a shot. It's going to hit the backboard and roll off, and it's going to be out of bounds, and it's going to stay Marmaduke basketball underneath their own goal. Justice Joyner with the basketball. Back over to Ava Anthony. Now Justice is trying to dribble. She's going to have the ball temporarily knocked away by Mason. Now Justice Joyner's going to travel when she tried to set her feet and let fake a three-point shot. It'll be a turnover. Yevil Summit will take over possession of the basketball, leading 15 to 11 with under 30 seconds to play in the first period. K.J. Moore at free throw line over to Hayward. Hayward puts up a three-point shot. It's off the mark. It'll be rebounded by number 14, Anthony, brought back down the floor by Justice Joyner. She's going to go all the way to the rim, put up a shot. It's going to be blocked by K.J. Moore. And then pulling it out of the air was 
Rory Cobb back down the floor as Abby Methvin puts up the shot on the left side and it's good. 17 to 11, Yevil Summit leads as the first quarter is coming to an end. Late shot off the mark and it's going to be after the first quarter, 17 to 11, the Yevil Summit Lady Panthers lead the Marmaduke Lady Greyhounds. We'll be right back after this music break. And to start this second quarter, the Lady Panthers will inbound the ball. It'll be Abby Methvin throwing it into Cameron Mason. She'll bring it across the timeline from the backcourt. Back to Abby Methvin. Methvin will get it back to Mason. Over to Hayward, back to Mason. It's going to go into the backcourt, and it's going to be a backcourt violation as soon as she touches it. That'll give the ball back to Marmaduke, and Marmaduke will inbound this. It'll be number four, Taylor, inbounding to... Justice Joyner. Barely gets it in on five count. Justice Joyner gets it back to Taylor. Now it's going to be a backcourt violation as that ball went into the backcourt, and so did she. Once she touched it, it was a backcourt violation, and it gives the ball back to the Lady Panthers. Methanet set the inbounded. Mason. Mason now gets it across to Hayward. Hayward on a skip pass. Gets it, she'll get it back to Mason. This ball is going to be stolen inside. It'll be Mackenzie Joyner. She's going to lose the ball off of her and her sister, Justice Joyner, out of bounds. It'll belong to the Lady Panthers in front of their own bench. I want to let you know that we're here at the Billy Ply Classic, and this game is this this tournament is being brought to you by. Baxter Regional Medical Center. It's also being brought to you by Terry and Darlene Ott of Ott Enterprises, Dosher and Associates, Allen's Grocery, Jason Nazarenko, Ben Gibson, Twisted Sisters, Carolyn's Razorback Ribs, North Arkansas College in Harrison, Sims Auction in Yellville, and Sam Pasting Law Firm, who is going to be sponsoring the parade later today, the Holodazzle Parade here in Flippin'. At the ball is in the Yellville Summit Lady Panthers offensive end of the floor. Hayward back over to Mason, puts up a three-point shot and drains the bottom of the net. That's going to make the score 20 to 11. Yellville Summit has pushed this out to a nine-point lead. Justice Joyner back on the other end of the floor gets the ball over to number two, Hampton. Hampton with the basketball. Pass it back to Joyner. She's going to throw a three-point shot up and she's going to drain it. 20 to 14 is your score. Five minutes or six minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this first, uh, first half. Hayward now with the basketball from a pass from Mason into Methvin at the free throw line. She's going to kick it back over to Mason. Hayward inside. Ball's going to be tipped by McKenzie uh, Joiner and taken down out of the air by number 33, Gibson. Hampton. Taylor with the Hampton back to Taylor. Taylor in the corner. She's going to dribble. Almost loses the ball being guarded by Rory Cobb from Yellville Summit. Now Justice Joyner is going to try to dribble and penetrate. She can't get inside. Shot is going to go up. It's no good. T 
tipped by Cobb and taken out of the air by Moore. Moore will get the ball to Methman. Methman gets it over to Mason on the left side. Back to the center of the floor to Hayward. Back to Mason. Inside to Moore. Moore's going to dribble, turn, and put up a shot. It's no good. Rebounded by number four, Taylor. Just as Joyner brings the ball back up the floor. She's going to get it over to Taylor. Taylor's going to lose her footing, and tr they're going to call her for traveling. She lost her footing, caught the ball on the ground. It did not appear to be traveling, but that was the call. Got a timeout on the floor, and the timeout is for Yellow Summit Panthers, and we'll take this timeout and tell you, Darlene and Terry Ott of Ott Enterprises, they will, uh, with their background in education and in politics in Marion County, they believe that the young people are the future, and this is why they do this, is so that they can have a platform for their families to watch them on. They want to say a special good luck to Bryce, Michaela, and Brooke Ott on their endeavors in 2023-24, and all athletes in, in uh, North Central Arkansas, they want to wish you good luck on your seasons and any extracurricular activities that you have. They're proud to sponsor uh, sports on Echo Sports 4034. Be sure and tune in when we have broadcasts. We are back here with 538 to play in the first half. 20 to 14 is your score. Yevil Summit inbounds the ball. Hayward will take the inbounds pass. She'll get it to Methvin on the other end. Methvin will dribble and penetrate the lane, puts up the shot. It's no good. K.J. Moore is coming down with the rebound, but it's going to go out of bounds off of Marmaduke. She appeared to be fouled. There was a lot of contact inside the lane. And they do call a foul on Justice Joyner. That's her second foul. Mason gets set to throw this in. It's not a shooting foul. Now it's going to be stolen. McKenzie, McKenzie uh, Joyner gets all the way back down the floor, puts up a layup on the right-hand side. That layup is good. Cuts the score 20-14. to 14. Hayward... Uh, just as she comes across timeline, catches the pass. Rory Cobb puts up a three-point shot. It's no good. The rebound is going to be tipped, and Mason is going to track down the long tipped rebound. Methvin dribbles, penetrates, puts up a shot with a Euro step, and it's good on the right-hand side. Gets up on the rim and just gets the right rotation and falls through the bottom of the net. Justice Joyner on the other end gets the ball out to number 13. Joyner, 13. Inside, it's going to go to get, uh, McKenzie Joyner. It's no good. It'll be rebounded by number 32, Bailey Joyner. Rory Cobb will pick up the foul. It'll be her first foul, and it'll send uh, Bailey Joyner to the free throw line to shoot two. First free throw is up and in. She'll cut the lead to 22 to 17. We have four minutes and 40 seconds to play in this first half. She has one more shot. Second shot is up and hits the front of the rim, rolls to the glass. It'll be tipped away from Cobb by Hayward. They'll re Cobb will recover the basketball, and then she'll get it to Methvin inside to K.J. Moore, who's going to put up a shot, and she's hammered as she puts up the shot. It'll be... The foul will be on number 33, Lexi Gibson. That's her first personal. That's the second team foul here in this second quarter. K.J. Moore is going to shoot two from the free throw line. She's perfect on the day. Misses her first one. Now she's two out of three from the free throw line today. One more shot. The second free throws up, rattles it around the rim and in. 23-17 is your score, 427 to play in the first half. Justice Joyner gets the ball back down the floor. She tries to dribble and penetrate. Gibson on uh, Mason on her. She gets it out to number two, Taylor, it looks like. Hampton, I'm sorry. Messman back down the floor with the basketball. Sets up the offense. Gets it inside to Moore. Moore's going to be called for traveling. She shuffled to her pivot foot, and that was just enough to get the call. Justice Joyner is going to bring this back up the center of the floor. She looks to dribble and penetrate. Now she's trying to get around Mason. Kicks it out to 
the edge on the left side, puts up a three-point shot. Hayward with the rebound. Down to Methman. Methman's going to put up a shot, and it's up and in on the right-hand side. Methman is the leading scorer in this ball game here today. She has eight points at this time. Hayward goes for the steal, misses it. Back over to Justice Joyner. She's going to try to dribble and penetrate. Cut off by K.J. Moore. Taylor puts up a three-point shot, and it's good. Sorry, Hampton puts up that three-point shot. 25-23, Yevil Summit leads in this contest with three minutes and 27 seconds remaining in the first half. Mason over to Cobb in the, center of, in the center of the floor. She dribbles to the right. Over to Hayward. Hayward puts up a three-point shot. It misses the mark. Be brought back up the floor by Hampton on the right side. She dribbles to the center of the floor. Now she's going to slow down, slow things down, get it over to 13 on the right side. Joiner comes to the right side. Down in the corner. Inside to McKin- uh, to Bailey Joiner. She's going to put up a shot. It's going to count, and she's going to be fouled. K.J. Moore will be called for... I believe her second foul of this ball game. She makes both if if Joiner if Bailey Joiner makes both of these free throws, she'll tie the game up. And Sierra Burrow is going to check in for Hayward. Actually, if she makes this shot, it'll give the team uh, give Marmaduke the lead. She missed it off the back of the iron, rebounded by. Mason back down the floor. She looks for somebody to pass to. Gets it to Moore back over to Mason. Mason gets it back to Moore in the corner. She's going to do a skip pass out to Cobb over to Burrow. Burrow looks inside to Moore. Puts up the shot on the right side. Off the glass and the rim and through. Lady Panthers take the lead again. Retake the lead. 27-25. Marmaduke to Hampton. Three-point shot. It's off of the iron, and it'll go out of bounds. It'll belong. The ball will belong to the Yellow Summit Panthers as K.J. Moore gets set to throw this in. I want to remind everybody we'll be doing the Holidazzle Parade here in Flippin today at about 4.30, so tune in to check that out. Rory Cobb puts up a three-point shot on the other end. Just a little too much on that as it goes over the rim. Hampton will bring it back down the floor. She looks to dribble and get into the lane. Puts up a shot. It's off the glass too hard, and it'll be a miss. Rebounded by Bailey Joyner, who is fouled on the shot that she missed, and she will go to the free throw line for two free throws. Sierra Burrow will pick up her first personal foul. Bailey Joyner will miss this first free throw. She can no longer tie the game, but she can make it a one-point ball game if she makes this. Second shot is up. It's good. Goes over the front of the net and falls through. 27-26. Yevil Summit leads. Methvin with a pass from Mason. Methvin back down the floor into the lane. She picks up her dribble. Gets it back out to Mason. Over to Burrow. Burrow is going to kick it over in the corner to Cobb. She's going to put up a shot from about 14 feet. It's no good. Hampton with the rebound. Brings it back up the left side of the floor. Justice Joyner cuts across. Takes the pass. Puts up a three-point shot. It's off of the back of the rim and no good. It's going to be out of bounds off of Yellow Summit. They're going to say that went out of bounds off of Marmaduke, so Yellow Summit will have the basketball underneath the goal and be inbounding. Ball will come into Methvin. It'll be knocked away, but picked up by Burrow. Over to Cobb. Cobb will pull it back up. A skip pass inside. Methvin will be... Tied up, and it's going to be possession will belong to the Marmaduke Lady Greyhounds. One minute and 29 seconds remaining in this first half. Your score is Yevil Summit, 27-26 for Marmaduke. Justice Joyner back down the floor. Neither one of these teams have needed the shot clock here today. Hampton, Joyner. Joyner's going to put up a three-point shot from the right side. It's good. They're going to retake the, retake the lead, 29-27. Methvin will bring this back up. She's going to pass to Moore all the way down on the right side, inside to Sierra Burrow as she's in the lane. Now Methvin gets to the corner of the free throw line, kicks it out to Mason. Mason puts up a three-point shot that's no good. Long rebound out to Hampton. Hampton back up the floor. Burrow chasing. Now she'll slow things down, and Mason will pick her up, reach in, and she'll put up a shot really hard off the glass, no good. Now with numbers, Abby Methvin on the other end of the floor puts up a layup on the right-hand side. It's good, 29-29.
under a minute to play. Justice Joyner comes back down the floor. Shot clock has not come into play one time today. Justice Joyner, center of the floor, center of the key, over to Hampton on the right side. Over back to Joyner. They're just playing catch. Mason on Joyner. She tries to dribble and penetrate, gets turned around. Back over to Hampton. Now Hampton gets it to Joyner. Hampton wide open momentarily as Mason gets back on her. Sierra Burrow is going to be called for a foul. It's not going to be a shooting foul. This should be from the sideline. She gets called for blocking there. It is her second personal. She gets called for blocking, but that'll be an inbound, and the shot clock is off. Three-point shot is no good. Long rebound is going to be tipped by Methvin and number 14, Ava Anthony, and they're going to call it out of bounds on Anthony. Methvin with the basketball. She's got two under two seconds to shoot. Long shot is no good from just beyond the half-court line, and that is going to be your first half. 29-29, Yelville Summit and Marmaduke are tied. We'll be back.
And we're back here to start this second half of the basketball game. First game of the Billy Ply Classic. Gavel Summit will inbound it. Hayward throws it into Mason on the floor. It'll be Mason Burrow. Or I'm sorry, Mason. Yeah, Mason Burrow, Hayward, Methvin, and more for the Lady Panthers. Methvin puts up a three-point shot that's deep, and it's going to be rebounded by number four, Taylor. She'll get over to Hampton. Hampton will bring it back up the right side of the floor. Justice Joyner goes around her, gets a pass, and she puts up a three-point shot. It's off the rim, rebounded by Bailey Joyner over to Taylor. Back to Hampton and around the horn to Justice Joyner. Justice Joyner with the basketball, looks at a three-point shot, kicks it back over to Hampton straight away, and she nails the three-pointer. She's going to open the second half and give the Marmaduke Greyhounds a 32-29 lead. Methvin on the other end of the floor on the left side. Gets it back to the center of the floor to Hayward. Burrow on the right. Back to Methvin in the center of the floor. She's going to dribble and penetrate. Gets stopped. Gets it back out to Mason. Over to Burrow. Inside to Moore. Moore's going to turn and put up a shot or put a, do a, try to pass the ball. Methvin's going to track down the loose ball. Put up a three-point shot. Tie the game at 32. Six minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the third period. Justice Joyner with the basketball on the other end of the floor. 6.40 to play in the third period. We're all tied up at 32. Now Justice Joyner is going to try and dribble and penetrate. Kicks it over to Taylor. Taylor to Hampton. Hampton looks at a three. She can't get it off. Kicks it to Taylor. She'll put it up. It's off the rim. Rebounded by number 32, Bailey Joyner. She's back up and in on the right side. Methvin brings it back down the floor with the Lady Panthers trailing by two. Hayward, Methvin, around to Mason on the left side. She puts up a three-point shot, hits the rim, no good. Rebounded by Hayward, back up and in on the right side. Hayward gets that back up and in on the right-hand side, ties the game. We're all tied up at 34. Justice Joyner over to Hampton. Hampton will get the ball back to Joyner. She looks at a three. Now she'll dribble and penetrate, gets inside the lane to Bailey Joyner. She puts it up and in on the right-hand side. Burroughs throws this into Methvin. Methvin will bring it back up the floor. Across the timeline, keep going to the left. Now she'll stop and dribble. Kicks the ball over to Hayward. Now Hayward, on the right center of the floor, looks to pass it. Gets it inside to the free throw line to Moore. Out to Burrow. She puts up a three-point shot. No good. Rebounded by Hampton. Hampton will bring it back up the right side of the floor. Mason will harass her all the way down the floor. She passes it off to Justice Joyner over to... Gibson will put that up and in on the right-hand side. Four-point lead now for the Lady Greyhounds. Methvin will bring this ball back down the floor. She'll get it to Mason on the right side. Down in the corner to Burrow. Ball's back to Mason, and it's going to be tipped with Gibson or uh, Bailey Joyner getting the tip. And back down the floor, Hampton's going to put up a shot. It's no good. Loose ball is going to be picked up by Cameron Mason for Yevil Summit. Over to Moore. Moore's going to get it back to Methvin, and she'll bring it across the timeline and set up the offense. Methvin will get in the lane, get trapped, and then pass the ball. Hayward passes on a three-point shot over to Burrow. Methvin's going to take a three-point from the right side. It's off the rim. It'll be rebounded by Cameron Mason. Quick shot put up. Hits the glass and bounces around the rim and out. It'll be rebounded by Bailey Joyner over to Taylor to – Justice Joyner, she brings it back down the floor on the right side. Hampton now with the basketball to Justice Joyner, who puts up a three-point shot, and she's going to drain that. 38, or I'm sorry, 41-34. Coach Melton's going to call timeout, and we'll take this timeout to tell you about Dozier & Associates. Dozier & Associates is the uh, is the uh, accounting firm for Marion County. If you've got any needs that you need taken care of, if you just got a simp- if you've simply just got a question about what to uh, do to avoid this or that, give give Travis and his his staff a call and they'll take care of you. They're located on Highway 14, just south of Highway 62 in Yellville. Allen's Grocery located at the Four Way and Summit. If you need if you need groceries. Listen, if you don't even know what you want, what you want to do for supper that night, call, go visit up there at Allen's Grocery, and I promise you, Tony and Isaac will take care of you. They can help you figure out what you want to eat that night, and they can get you the best meats and best uh, groceries that you can get in the area. They're located at the four-way in Summit. Get up there and check out Allen's Grocery. 
Yellow Summit Panthers are going to inbound this ball underneath the Mar Marmaduke bench or uh, basket. Hayward's going to take the inbound pass from Mason and bring it up the floor. Gets it back to Mason. Over to Burrow in the corner on the left side. Hayward takes the pass from Moore. She dribbles inside and puts up a shot. It's no good. It'll go out of bounds off of Hayward as it was blocked by Bailey Joyner. And then Hayward tried to get the ball back, and it went out of bounds. Justice Joyner is going to bring this up the center of the floor. She'll be picked up by Mason, and Mason – and she, as she gets into the lane, she'll dribble it and pass it over to ba uh, Bailey Joyner. Now Sierra Burrow is going to come up with the basketball. Possession arrow is going to favor Marmaduke as a jump, as a tie ball is called. It'll be Marmaduke's ball under the under the goal. Ava Anthony will get set to throw this in. She'll throw it into Justice. We're going to have a timeout on the uh, Marmaduke bench this time. We're going to let you know that Jason Nazarenko is running for state representative. But listen, that's not the reason he's doing this. All of these kids need to have a platform that their families can come and watch them on, and that's what he's doing this for, is for those kids to have that platform for their families to see it. He understands they're the future, and he wants to make sure that every kid from Cotter, Flippin, Devil Summit, Lead Hill, Ozark Mountain, even Bergman and Valley Springs has a way to be seen while they're playing this year. Ben Gibson over in Yellville, he is an attorney on the square, and if you have accidentally done something wrong or did something wrong, you can child custody, Ben can take care of that. Give him a call over there on the square in Yellville. want to remind you, too, that Sam Pasting will be the sponsor for the Holodazzle Parade here in Flippin'. We'll be doing that at 4.30 this afternoon. Anthony with the ball gets it back over to Hampton. Now, Hampton will go cross court to Justice Joyner. Now, she's going to dribble and try to get to the baseline and penetrate. Can't do so. Gets it back out to Anthony. Anthony over to Hampton. Hampton looks inside. They're definitely looking inside first for the shot. Hayward goes for the steal, misses it. Justice Joyner drives and puts up a shot. It's going to go out of bounds. But are they going to call a foul? It appears they will call They will call a foul. It won't be a shooting foul as they're going to inbound under the, on the baseline. It'll be K.J. Moore's third personal foul here in this ball game. Score is 41-34, 3.06 remaining in the third period. Three-point shot from Anthony, hits the back of the rim and goes over the basket, rebounded by Bailey jo or by Gibson out to Hampton. Hampton's going to put up a three-point shot and make it. That's going to push the lead to 44-34, to 10-point lead for Marmaduke. Hayward now with the basketball. Back over to Mason. Mason dribbles to the center and passes to Methvin on the right side. She's going to put up a three-point shot. It's going to hit the back, hit the front of the rim to the glass. Bounce off. Re rebounded by Marmaduke. Back up the floor. Hampton with the ball. She gets it to Justice Joyner. Justice Joyner wants the baseline. Can't get there. Gets the ball over to Ava or Anthony, and Anthony puts up a three-point shot. Bailey Joyner with the rebound. And she's going to be called for traveling on the baseline, looking to pass the ball. Yevil Summit will inbound this. It'll be K.J. Moore get, gets set to throw this in. And it looks like she's going to throw it into Methman, but she also has Hayward as an option. Does come into Methman. Methman will get it to Hayward. She'll bring it across the timeline. They'll set the offense up over to Mason. Down into the left corner, Rory Cobb has checked in. She took the pass. Hayward. Looked at a three-point shot. No, didn't take it. Passes to Moore. Methvin is going to be harassed by Anthony. Out to Hayward, who's going to put up a three-point shot, a high rainbow shot that's no good. It'll be rebounded by Gibson and brought back up the floor by just Joiner, just uh, Justice Joiner. Justice Joiner will take a three-point shot from the left wing, and it's good. Methvin brings this ball back up the floor over to Hayward. Mason down into the left corner to Rory Cobb. She's going to put up a three-point shot. It's off the rim. Rebounded by Hayward and back up and in. She puts that up in on, up on the right side and falls through the net. 47-36 is your score. 11-point lead for Marmaduke. Justice Joyner at the free throw line turns around and dribbles back out. She'll get the ball to Hampton. Back to Justice Joyner. Over to Anthony. Anthony looks... 
inside. Can't get it there. Finds a cutting joiner. She's going to have to pass it across floor. Mason picks Hampton up. Back over to Anthony, to Justice, jo uh, Justice Joyner, who gets inside. She'll kick the ball over to McK Bailey Joyner. Now it's going to be a steal by K.J. Moore. She stepped in front of the pass. Nethman on the other end of the floor, into the lane, puts up a shot. It's off the back of the iron, and we're going to have a foul called, and it's going to be Marmaduke's basketball. It'll be on Abby Methman for being over the back. Anthony will check out of this as number 13 checks back in. Justice Joyner brings the ball up the floor. That was the first foul called on Methvin in this ballgame. Second team foul called against Flippin in the third or Yevil Summit in the third period. Steal by Methvin. Methvin out in front of everybody. She's gonna go, she's got a she's gonna get to the basket. Stop and pivot and put up a shot on the right side. It's good. Under 15 to play in this first third period. Justice Joyner to Hampton. Hampton gets the ball back to Joyner. Joyner dribbles, penetrates, tries to over to number 13. She'll kick it out to Hampton wide open momentarily. She puts up a three-point shot off the back of the iron. Rebound to Cobb. After three periods of play, 47-38, Marmaduke leads Yellville Summit in this ball game. We want to let you know that Twisted Sisters is right here in Yellville and in, uh, in Flippin. Look for the blue-green blue parking stops on Main Street, and you will be able to get your hair done, your nails. You can get whatever you need done and get it taken care of in a quick flash. She's the best there is. Go ahead and get in there and check that out. Get your hair cut today. It doesn't matter if it's simple or if it's really an intense perm. We'll be right back. Lady Panthers will start the fourth period with the basketball, and Methvin will bring it into play. Methvin with the basketball. Mason in the right-hand corner inside to K.J. Moore. K.J. kicks it back out to Mason, who puts up a three-point shot, and she drains the bottom of the net. 47-41 is your score. 7-41 to play in this ballgame. Six-point lead for Marmaduke. Marmaduke, Justice Joyner. She gets the ball inside. Bailey Joyner with the basket on the right-hand side. Messman on the other end. She's going to pass the ball over to Hayward. Two Yelvil Summit Lady Panthers there. Now inside to Messman. She puts up a layup, and it's no good. Joyner comes down with that rebound. I'm sorry, that was Gibson with the rebound. Now we've got Hampton with the basketball. Looks for Joyner. She gets it to Justice. Cross court to number four, Taylor. Back around to Joyner. She's going to dribble and penetrate. Kicks it out to Taylor. Taylor looks at a three. Kicks it out to Hampton. She looks at it. Joyner won't look at it. She'll take it and she'll rattle that three-point shot in. 52-41, nine-point lead now for the Lady Greyhounds. Methvin will bring this back up the right side to the center of Florida Hayward. Back to Bethvin. She'll put up a three-point shot off of the back of the iron. It's no good. It'll be rebounded by Bailey Joyner. She finds Justice Joyner, and they'll bring the ball back up the floor. Hampton with the ball. Joyner looks inside. Now she dribbles. She's guarded by Cameron Mason. Out to Hampton to Taylor now. Taylor will be guarded by Mason. She's going to put up a shot as she gets inside the free throw line, puts up or gets her own rebound, and then a foul is going to be called. Foul will be called 
It'll be called on number five, Hannah Hayward, and that'll be her first foul of this ball game. Timeout called by Marmaduke because they have trouble getting the ball in bounds. We want to take this time to tell you about Carolyn's Razorback Ribs over in Yellville. If you need a quick fix for lunch or whatever you need, get in there to uh, Carolyn's or Carolyn's Razorback Ribs, and she'll take care of you and get you back to work on time. We'll be right back. And we're back here. Marmaduke will inbound this on the ba underneath their own basketball goal. Justice Joyner back to Hampton. Now Hampton will get it back to Joyner. Joyner is going to try to dribble and penetrate, kick it to Taylor over to Hampton. Hampton looks cross court to Joyner. Can't find her. Can't get inside. Now she's got Gibson inside. And she's going to put up a shot. She's going to make the shot. And she's going to be fouled. It looks like it's going to be on Abby Methvin. If it is, it will be her second foul, but it will also send – Gibson to the free throw line to shoot us one free throw after the basket counts. 54-41 is your score. Lady uh, Greyhounds lead. Free throw by Gibson is no good. It'll be rebounded by Moore over to Hayward. Hayward will bring it up the right side of the floor over to Methvin on the left. Back to Hayward. Hayward looks inside, can't find anything open. Rory Cobb in the left corner is open. Now it'll be back to Mason. Mason gets it back to Methvin. Methvin will try to dribble and penetrate. Get, kicks it over to Hayward on the right side. Inside to Moore, out to Mason. To Methvin, she'll put up a three-point shot. It'll hit the rim and bounce out. We're going to have traveling called against Taylor when she went to the floor. Must be something with those long knee pads that she slides when she hits the floor. K.J. Moore with the basket. It's going to be a clean block is what the official says. Methman with the steal. Methman kicks it out to Rory Cobb. She gets it down in the right corner to Hayward inside to K.J. Moore. She's going to dribble and penetrate, spin, and get it in. She puts that up and in on the left-hand side with an easy layup. 54-43, 4.56 to play. Appears that the Greyhound, Lady Greyhounds are trying to run a little clock now, dribbling and penetrating. Just, Justice Joyner, I say that, and then she puts up a three-point shot from the right side that's good. Yubble Summit calls timeout. We'll tell you about North Arkansas College over in Harrison. If you have a senior or junior in school right now, North Arkansas College is one of the premier colleges in the area, and they've got a knack for just about whatever you want to do. Um They'll help you get your degree plan and get you figured out what you want to do and what you need to do to get there. So check them out over there in Harrison, North Arkansas College. They've got a knack for that. Yellow Summit's going to inbound this under the Marmaduke bench or basket. Mason will throw it into Hayward and she'll kick it back to Mason. Over to Methan on the right side. Now Hayward back in the center. She'll dribble to the left to Cobb. Cobb will dribble back to the center and she'll kick it over to Hayward down into the corner to Methman. She'll dribble, penetrate, and put up a short jumper, and it's good. 
57-45. They've cut it back to 12 now. Justice Joyner brings the ball back up the floor for Marmaduke. She'll be guarded by Mason. Cobb guards Bailey Joyner. Methvin will guard Taylor. Hayward is on Hampton. Taylor's going to put up a shot. It's going to be off the mark. It'll hit the rebound. Loose ball on the floor. Bailey Gibson comes up, or Bailey Joyner comes up with it. It'll be thrown out of bounds, and they're going to call it out of bounds, tipped off of Yelville. Yelville bench does not like that call. Neither do their fans. Somebody asked for a replay. Hampton with the basketball, guarded by Hayward like a blanket. Joyner now, guarded by Mason. Kicks it out to Bailey Joyner. No good on her shot as it rims out. Rebound, K.J. Moore. Methvin back up the floor. Methvin on the left side. She's going to dribble and penetrate. Now she'll dribble back out into the left corner. She'll put up a three-point shot. It's no good. Rory Cobb will come down with the rebound over Taylor. Now Methvin will straight away will put up a three-point shot that's a little off the mark. Now Justice Joyner not in a hurry to get back down the floor. Now she's going to be harassed by Cameron Mason, forcing the coach to call timeout. And during this timeout, we'll tell you about Sims Auto Auction, or Sims Auction. If you need something auctioned and you're in the Yelleville area, you need to call Hunter Sims, and he will take care of that for you. He also does real estate auctions, something he's really started this year. We want to remind you, well, we'll remind you in a minute after the music. And we're back here as Marmaduke get, gets set to inbound this pass. We've got 3.03 to play, and they've got a 57-45 lead. We want to remind you that we're going to do the Holodazzle Parade here in Flippin' later this afternoon at 4.30. That'll be brought to you by Sam Pasting, attorney at law here in Flippin'. Justice Joyner with the basketball. She's guarded by Sierra Burrow. Kicks it down to Gibson. Gibson puts it up. It's no good. And R Bailey Joyner will put that up and in. Methvin quickly back up the floor. She'll kick it over to Hayward on the left side. Now in the left corner will be Cobb back to Methvin, puts up a three-point shot. She banks that in off the glass. 59-48. 11-point lead now for the Lady Greyhounds. They bring the ball up. Justice Joyner. Will be guarded by Sierra Burrow. She'll kick it out to Hampton. Hampton will back out of there. And now she's going to be guarded like an electric blanket by Hayward. Over to Taylor. Taylor didn't see inside. Justice Joyner is going to put up a deep, deep three-point shot. And she'll make that. 62-48 is your score. Inside to K.J. Moore. K.J. is going to be fouled. She'll be fouled, and it looks like it'll be on Justice Joyner. It'll be on Bailey Joyner, wrong Joyner. It's her first personal foul. Checking into the game for Taylor will be number 24, J.C. Pratt. Methvin with the basketball. Immediately puts up a three-point shot that's off the back of the iron. It'll be rebounded by Pratt over to Bailey Joyner to Justice Joyner. She'll bring it back up the right side of the floor. Sierra Burrow picks her up after she comes across the timeline. Burrow will be driven off 
The ball will come out to Hampton, back to Justice Joyner. She looks inside to Bailey Joyner and can't get the pass in there. Now she tries to dribble and penetrate, puts up a shot, hits the bottom of the rim, rebounded by Moore. Moore comes out with the ball. Methman now with the ball looks to set the offense up. Now she's going to dribble and penetrate. She puts up a shot over Bailey Joyner. It's no good, and it'll be tipped out of bounds off of Marmaduke. Gibson will be the last one to touch that as it goes out of bounds. Score 62-48, 105 to play in the ball game. Second half has belonged to Marmaduke because they were tied up at halftime, 29 all. Cobb with the basketball over to Hay- uh, Burrow. Hayward around to Methman. Now Methman will try and dribble and penetrate. Kicks it out to Hayward for a three-point shot. Off the rim, no good. Bailey Joyner with the rebound to Hampton, and she'll bring it up the right side of the floor. She'll be picked up by Hayward. Justice Joyner now will be picked up by Burrow, and she'll be forced to put the ball out to Pratt. Over to Justice Joyner, and she'll dribble inside. Kick it out to Hayward. Over to Joyner. Back to Hay- back to Hampton, and then back to Joyner again. Joyner's going to try to dribble the baseline, puts up a shot underhand, and it's going to be up and in. We've got massive changes for the team for Marmaduke in this last 23.6 seconds, and they lead 64-48. Methvin brings the ball up the floor. Over to Hayward. Hayward behind the three-point line, kicks it cross court to Burrow. Low pass. She has to pick it up off the floor. Now Methvin dribbles, penetrates, puts up a shot. It's no good. Moore with the rebound. She's going to put the put it back up on the right side. It's no good. Hayward is going to come down with the basketball, but the possession arrow is going to favor Marmaduke. And with 2.6 seconds, that's probably all you're going to see. 64-48 will be your final here today in the first round, the first game of the Billy Ply Classic. So the Yellville Summit will fall in this game, 48, 60, or 64 to 48. At the end of the first period, Marmaduke trailed Yellville Summit 17 to 11. At the end of the second quarter, it was 29 to 29. And after we came back out and start out from halftime, it was 47-38 at the end of three and 64-48 at the end of the ball game.
All right, we're going to get started here for the second game of the day. It'll be flipping Lady Bobcats versus the Lady Pirates from Jasper. For Jasper, it'll be number 15, Lila Ralston starting, number 20, Jaden Middleton, number 22, Tiana Siebert, number 24, Willa Young, and number 30, Lady Laney Daniels. Number Candace Pendergrass, number two, will start for flipping. Alyssa Shelton, number 14, Allie Hodges, number 21. Kenna, Kenna Greenhall, number 23, and number 32, Marcy Benedict. And the opening tip will be con controlled by the Lady Pirates, and they're going to score immediately behind the scoring of Laney Daniels. Flippin' will bring the ball in, and it will be Pendergrass bringing the ball up the floor. She'll get it over to... Number 14, Shelton. Back to Daniels. The ball's going to be stolen, or Daniels is going to steal it. Get the ball down to Siebert. She's going to put it up and in. Four to nothing early. 7.25 to play in the first period. Steal by number 20. Daniels with the ball. She's going to get it up and in. The steal was by number 20, Jaden Middleton. Daniels will get the basketball to the goal. She's not going to score, but she will be fouled. And it'll be the first foul against number two, Cadence Prendergrass. She'll have two shots from the line. First one is up and hits the front of the rim, rolls to the glass, and falls through. She's got one more with a five to nothing lead early for Jasper. Second one is up and hits the back, back of the rim and Falls through. This is going to be knocked away by number 24, Willa Young, for the Pirates. It will be flipping basketball as they get set to throw this in. It'll ball will come in number 21, Allie Hodges. Shelton brings the ball up the right side of the floor, kicks it out to Benedict over to Pendergrass, and Pendergrass will drive the lane and put up a hook shot. It's no good. And the ball will go out of bounds. It'll belong to the Lady Pirates. Pirates get set to throw this in. All 10 players in the backcourt. Now they move to the front court. And Daniels will kick the ball off to Young. Now the ball belongs in the hands of Middleton. It'll be knocked out by flipping on a pass to Daniels. Shelton knocks that out of bounds. Siebert will throw this in. She'll throw it into the backcourt to Middleton. Middleton brings it back across the timeline. She finds Daniels. Daniels will dribble, look to penetrate, couldn't get it in. Now she gets the ball back. Ralston with the basketball. Greenhall will guard her. She passes it, and we've got a 35-second shot clock violation. First one of those we've seen today. Shot clock is something that is fairly new for these schools. Flippin has to get this ball across the timeline, and they're not going to do it. They're going to have a 10-second violation. You've got 10 seconds to get this ball into the front court, and they couldn't get it into the front court. The full court defense for the Pirates was really stout there. Siebert throws this ball in to Middleton. Middleton will dribble towards the left side. Now she gets this to Ralston. Ralston tries to dribble and penetrate against Greenhall. There, she's going to be called for a travel. Good defense here early. Number 32, Marcy Benedict gets set to throw this in. She's got Shelton down in the front court. Shelton all the way to the rim. She's going to Euro step, put it up on the rim. It's no good. She gets her own rebound, and then she puts that up and in from the left hand side from about three feet out. Five to two is your, or six to two is your score. 551 remaining in the first period. Daniels brings the ball up, guarded by Shelton. She tries to get it in the lane. She passes it off, and now it's going to be stolen as Shelton. Knocks it away and then picks it up. 
And then it'll be knocked out of bounds by Daniels. It'll be flipping basketball on this near sideline. Marcy Benedict gets set to throw this in. She's going to find Pendergrass cutting towards the basketball. Get it back to Benedict. Benedict will dribble to the left side of the floor. Get the ball to Hodges. and We're going to have a turnover by flipping. Hodges a guard the baseline inbound pass. Ball will come in to uh, Middleton. Middleton will bring it back up the right side of the floor. She'll be guarded by Benedict. Ralston with the ball in the corner. She tries to dribble and penetrate. Greenhall cuts her off. And now Daniels will put up a three point, a two point shot, and that's Middleton. Pushes the score to nine to two. Pendergrass with the basketball. An outlet pass to Shelton. Shelton will pull it back out. Re reset. She'll lose the ball. Now she'll regain possession. And we've got a foul called. Looks like this may be called on Daniels of Jasper. It is her first personal foul, and it's the first team foul for Jasper. 454 remaining. This is not a shooting foul, so there won't be anybody at the free throw line. Greenhall gets her shoe her shoe retied. Now we're gonna have the inbound pass. Comes into Hodges. Hodges dribbles to the center of the floor, into the lane, turns around and puts a layup. Up, it's no good. Ball's tipped to her on the rebound. She's fouled while taking a shot. She'll go to the free throw line. Middleton will be called for the foul, and it'll be her first foul, second team foul. Hot. Allie Hodges at the free throw line to shoot two free throws. First one is up and rims out. She'll have a second shot right here. She makes this one. She can cut the lead to six. Second shot is up. It hits the front of the rim, rolls to the glass, and falls through. Ball will be brought back up the floor by Young. She gets it over to Ralston. Now, Ralston wants to try to dribble and penetrate. Can't get there. Daniels does the same, kicks it out to Siebert. Siebert drives the baseline. Now, she'll pass it out, and she'll be out of bounds when she touches the ball. Foot was on the line. It'll be a turnover back to Flippin. Benedict will get set to throw this in for the Lady Lady Bobcats. She'll get it into Pendergrass right back immediately to Benedict. Down to Hodges, and it'll go out of bounds because the pass was too far for her to reach. Pirates inbound the ball. Young brings it up the floor. Gets into the lane. Stops and puts up a shot too hard and high off the glass. Rebound by Ali Hodges. She'll hand it to Pendergrass. She'll bring it back up the center of the floor. Lose control of the ball. Greenhall picks it up and puts up a shot. It's no good, and it'll fall out of bounds. Got a timeout on the floor for Jasper. We'll take this timeout to tell you we want to remind you that we're having the Holodazzle Parade here later this afternoon, and we will be proud to say that Sam Pasting is, brought, is sponsoring that, and we will have that for you at 4.30 here on Echo Sports 4034. Lady Pirates will inbound from their own baseline. Got to hurry up and get it in. They do. It will be Middleton bringing the ball up the floor. She'll come up the left center of the floor. Gets to the foul line. She puts up a shot. It's no good off the edge of the rim. Greenhall with the rebound. Pendergrass takes the pass. She's got an outlet pass to Hodges. Hodges puts it up on the left side. It's no good. Shelton up and rebounding that and puts it back up and in on the right side. Nine to five is your score. Ralston takes the inbounds pass. 
Gets it back to Siebert. Siebert up the right side of the floor. She's going to drive. No, she's going to pass it off to Willie Young, who puts it up. Puts the shot up. It's no good. She tries to save it, and it's on the baseline when she does. Flippin will have this ball inbound under the Jasper basketball goal. Shelton takes the inbounds pass from Benedict. She'll come up the left center of the floor, kicks it out to Hodges. Hodges puts up a shot. It's off the rim. Shelton's there to pick up the loose ball. Benedict with a three-point shot that hits the rim and goes straight in the air and falls back through the net. Nine to eight. Jasper leads. It's been cut to one. 3.07 remaining in the first half. Ralston brings it across the timeline. Tries to dribble and penetrate. Kicks it back out. Ball goes to Daniels. Now Siebert with the basketball. Tries to dribble and penetrate down the side of the lane. It's no good. Shelton is there to pick up the loose ball rebound. All the way back up the floor. The ball is knocked away and goes out of bounds as Ralston tries to save it on the baseline. Checking into the game will be number three, Maggie Thomas, or Jasper. She'll check in for number 24, Willa, Th- Willa Young. Shelton with the basketball over to Pendergrass. Hodges in the corner. She's going to dribble and back it out. She'll hand it off to Pendergrass. Pendergrass will put up a three-point shot, and she'll make that. That'll give Flippin the first lead of the ball game at 11-9. Daniels quickly back down the floor, gets into the lane. She's guarded by Greenhall. She'll kick it back out. Shot will go up by Middleton for three. It's no good. Rebounded by Greenhall. Pendergrass gets it back down to Shelton. She tries to put up a shot. It's no good. Loose ball on the floor. We're going to have a jump ball. And the possession arrow will favor flipping. This will mean Benedict gets set on the, underneath her own basketball goal to throw this in. She's got Kenna Greenhall up and in on the right-hand side as it hits the rim and gets the English, falls through. Now back down the other end of the floor. It'll be Thomas cut off by Benedict. Now Ralston tries to drive and penetrate. She's going to be fouled. We'll see who this foul is on. Foul will that will be on number 23, Kenna Greenhall. That's her first personal foul and the second foul for the team. First free throw from Ralston will hit the back of the rim and can fall out. Wholesale changes for flipping as Greenhall, Benedict, and Pendergrass will check out. Allie Hodges will get set to throw this ball in. She'll get it into Shelton. Adrian Benedict checked in on on the game. Got a whistle. We got a foul. Be on number five. Nally. Heaven lay a Nally. Sieber to bring this ball up the floor. Breedlove checked in with the basketball. Now number 24, Willa Young, who's checked back in. Heavy coverage and forces timeout for Asper. We'll take this timeout to tell you that Baxter Regional brings you these calls, and we are here to because of Baxter Regional and they're located on Hospital Drive. If you've got an emergency need and need something taken care of, get over there to Baxter Regional and they'll take care of all of your emergency needs as well as getting you fixed up and getting you back to work almost as good as new. Then check out Baxter Regional Medical Center on Hospital Drive in Mountain Home. We want to re- remind you that we're doing the Holodazzle Parade here in Flippin'. On down Main Street, that'll be at 4.30 this afternoon and sponsored by Sam Pasting, attorney at law here in Flippin. He wanted to make sure that everybody could see the Christmas spirit here in Flippin by the Flippin Chamber of Commerce. 
Jasper's going to get set to throw this basketball back in. Young with the basketball. She takes the inbound pass. She'll be guarded by Benedict, Adrian Benedict. Ralston gets it inside, guarded by Hodges. Misses the shot as it's blocked by Hodges. Willie Young now with the basketball. Second shot clock violation. The flipping defense has been really stout here this afternoon, and it's the second shot clock violation by the Lady Pirates. Shelton with the inbounds pass. She's guarded by Young. She gets around Young. Now she gets across the timeline. Nally will give her a screen. Back to Nally, but Nally's going to be called for traveling as she goes to the free throw line or goes to the rim with the ball. Roston will throw this in. She'll be guarded by Hodges. Got it. Got the ball in in time. She gets it to Middleton. Middleton will bring it up the right side of the floor. Middleton into the lane, kicks it out. Three-point shot by the Lady Pirates is no good. It'll be rebounded by be rebounded by Flippin, and a foul will be called on number twenty. Jaden Middleton be her second personal foul, and she'll check out of the game. Pass inbounds pass is short and intercepted by Willa Young over to Ralston. Ralston tries to dribble and penetrate, kicks it out, and she'll put up Sieber to put up a three point shot that's no good. Now the ball will go out of bounds, and it'll belong to the Jasper Lady Pirates. Nally fought for the basketball and couldn't get the, couldn't get it, but she was able to knock it away from Ralston. Ball comes into number 23, Breedlove. Breedlove, get it inside to Ralston. She'll put up the shot. It's no good, but a foul is called on the inside. The shot looks like it's going to count. It'll be the first first team or first personal foul against Allie Hodges here today. Ralston will be at the line to shoot one. And she'll tie it up with that make. 13 all is your score with 21.7 seconds remaining in the first period. Shelton brings the ball up. She finds number 24, Adrian Benedict, but it'll be knocked away at the last second. Inbounds to Flippin. Benedict, Adrian Benedict will get set to throw this in. She'll get it into Shelton. Shelton's back in the front court. Hodges now with the ball. She's going to dribble and penetrate out to Benedict. And Benedict's going to hit a three-point shot with six seconds remaining. Willie Young with the basketball. Got to hurry up and get a shot off. She's not going to get it off. At the half, after, after the first period, it's 16-13, flipping leads. We'll be right back. We're back here to start this second period of play. 16-13 flipping leads, the Lady Bobcats. Seaver to get this in. She'll get it into Middleton. Middleton will come across the timeline from the backcourt. Uh, Allie Hodges will have her. Ball is bounced off of uh, Seabird's foot, picked up by Hodges over to Shelton. She'll bring it back up the floor. Now Hodges with the ball as she gets it to Nally now. Benedict will put up the shot. It's off the mark. 
hits the glass and falls over to Daniels. Daniels will bring it up the court, and she'll kick it over to Middleton. Middleton will get it out to Young. Young dribbles and penetrates, puts up the shot. It's no good, but a foul is going to be called. Be the second personal foul called on Allie Hodges in this ball game. First one of the first team foul in the second half in the second period. Willie Young at the line to shoot two free throws. First one hits the back of the rim, rattles to the front, and finally falls through. Allie Hodges will check out, and checking in for her will be number twenty-three, Green, uh, Kenna Greenhall. Second free throw is up off the back of the rim. Nally with the rebound. She gets it over to Adrian Benedict. And Benedict will get it to Shelton. Shelton brings it all the way back down the floor. Puts up a layup, a hook layup. It's no good. And it'll be tipped out of bounds, called out of bounds off of the Lady, Flip, Lady Popcats. Lady Pirates will inbound this. Ball will come back up the floor with Middleton. Now Willie Young tries to get it to Daniels, does. Daniels in the lane, kicks it back out to Young. She puts up a three-point shot and drains the bottom of the net. 17-16, Lady Pirates now lead this contest. Adrian Benedict gets set to throw this in. She'll get it into Shelton. Shelton will be double teamed. Now she'll spin out of the double team. Come back and forth, split the double team, and get all the way down the floor. Kicks it to Greenhall. Greenhall's going to put it up and over the rim. Nally with the rebound. Puts it up, back it up, and in with a hook shot. 18-17, Lady Bobcats lead. Nally guards the inbound pass. Ball finally gets inbounded to Middleton. Middleton will bring it back up the right side of the floor. Shelton on her. Young now with the basketball. Inside to Siebert. And she'll get it up and in on the right-hand side. Benedict gets set to throw this in, gets it into Shelton. Shelton comes up the left side of the floor. She'll be double-teamed. The ball will be knocked away, out of bounds, into the Pirate bench. Marcy Benedict will check back in. Cadence Pendergrass will check back in for Flippin. Pendergrass takes the inbounds pass from Marcy Benedict. Greenhall shooting to the, cutting to the goal. will put a layup in on the right-hand side. It's good. 20 to 19, the Lady Bobcats retake the lead. Young kicks the ball over to number three, Maggie Thomas in the corner. She'll make a three-point shot. We've got a timeout flipping, and we want to take this timeout to tell you about Odd Enterprises and that they think that all these students deserve a right for their parents to, and extended family to be able to watch them, and that's why they do this. They want to say good luck to all of the student athletes in North Central Arkansas and a special good luck to Bryce, Brooke, and Michaela Ott and on their endeavors in 2023-24. Be right back. Marcy Benedict gets that to throw this in. She'll get it into Pendergrass. Pendergrass looked for coverage. There wasn't anybody there to cover her. She over overshoots Nally on the other end. And the Lady Bobcats will put a full court press on. Greenhall will guard the inbounds pass from Ralston. Just gets the ball inbounds to Willie Young. She gets it back up the floor into the lane, kicks it out to Thomas. Thomas puts up another three-point shot that's good. 25-20 now. Lady Pirates lead this contest. Ball comes in from Marcy Benedict to Adrian Benedict. She'll bring it up the center of the floor. Now travels to the left, picks up her dribble, attempts to make a pass, and she'll be fouled on the pass. Foul was called on number three, Thomas. That'll be her first foul of this ball game. 
first team foul in the second period. Marcy Benedict throws the ball in, gets it to Pendergrass. Pendergrass will travel as she picks up her dribble. Lady Pirates going to throw this in. Siebert throws it into uh, Middleton. Middleton gets it to Young. Now Young will find Ralston, who's looking inside. She'll get it across court to Middleton, back to Thomas. Thomas will dribble across the lane and kick the ball outside. Inside to Ralston. She puts up a shot. It's off the front of the rim. We're going to have a foul called against the Pirates. It'll be on Ralston. It'll be the second team foul against the Pirates in this period, and it'll be Ralston's first first foul of this game. Shelton with the basketball, gets it back to Marcy Benedict. She brings it across the timeline. Now the ball's going to be stolen by Willa Young. She's going to get all the way to the rim, put up a shot. No good. It'll be The rebound will be tracked down by Shelton, and she'll get back down the floor, slow things down, and check the offense. Inside to Nally. Nally will dribble once and put the shot up. It's a hook shot that's good. 25-22. Lady Pirates lead. Full coverage on the floor. Lady Pirates get the ball back down the floor with Middleton. Now Thomas over to Middleton, cross court. Puts up a three-point try. It's no good. Rebounded by Greenhall. Shelton with the ball. She brings it up the right side of the floor. Looks at the right corner. Now it goes back towards the center of the floor and finds Nally cutting to the basketball guard. Puts it up and in off the glass. 24-25. Lady Pirates are leading this ball game. Ralston puts up a rare three-point shot for her. It's going to be rebounded by Adrian Benedict over to Shelton. Shelton will bring it back up the center. Now she travels to the left. Marcy Benedict fall, leads her leads the way, clears it out. Shelton will put up a shot from 15 feet out. It's good. 26-25, Flippin re, retakes the lead. Tom, uh, a shot by Willie Young from three-point range gives Jasper the lead, 28-26. Shelton will bring this up with 2.56 remaining before halftime. She's going to put up a three-point shot from about straight away. Nally's going to fight for the rebound, get it, get it to Greenhall. She's going to put up a hook shot. She's going to hit the back of the rim, and she's going to miss the shot, and then she's going to be called for a foul over the back on Ralston. Allie Hodges will check back in as she checks back in for Nally. Middleton will take the inbounds pass, and Ralston will follow her up the floor. Daniels with the ball, tries to dribble and penetrate. She gets into the lane, kicks it back out to Ralston, who puts up a three-point shot that's off the mark. Hits the rim. Now Shelton will come up with the loose ball rebound. And she'll come up left side of the floor, switches back to the right. Now she's going to make a pass to Allie Hodges. Allie Hodges tries to dribble and penetrate. Kicks it out to Adrian Benedict over to Greenhall. Now Greenhall's going to hand the ball back to Shelton. She's going to put up a three-point shot. Be off the back of the rim, no good. Long rebound is going to come out to Adrian Benedict. And a foul is going to be called against Pirates. Foul will be called against number 20, and that is Jaden Middleton. That's her third personal foul. She's going to have to take a seat on the bench not to pick up that fourth. Checking back in will be Charlie Breedlove. Holly Hodges takes the inbounds pass. Now she'll hand it to Adrian Benedict, who's going to lose the basketball, track it down. And now she's got to pass the ball after she picks up her dribble. Over to Marcy Benedict on the right side. Now to Allie Hodges. Allie's going to dribble and penetrate. Puts the shot up. It's off the back of the rim. And then we're going to have a jump ball. Ball's possession arrow is going to favor flipping. Marcy Benedict will get set to throw this in. Gets it into Greenhall. It falls off of her fingertips. It'll be picked up by number 23, Breedlove, all the way back down the floor. She'll kick it back out to Siebert. Siebert will find, eventually they'll find number three, Thomas, who tries a three-point shot that's no good. 
Shelton brings the ball back up the floor, finds Adrian Benedict. Adrian Benedict all the way to the rim, puts up a shot off the glass. It's good. Ball game's all tied up at 28 with 1.15 to play. Ralston gets the basketball and puts it up and in on the right side. Reno had went for the steal. Didn't quite get it. Marcy Benedict gets the ball to Allie Hodges across the timeline. Benedict now will dribble to the left, now back to the right. And she's going to find the ball in Adrian Benedict's hands. Knocked away. Knocked away twice by number three, Thomas. Ball goes out of bounds. Flipping will inbound this. Benedict, Marcy Benedict gets it into Greenhall. Ralston hands him, knocks the ball away. She picks it back up. Now Benedict with the ball. Over to Allie Hodges, who puts up a three-point shot. That'll be off the edge of the rim. Rebound, Ralston back down the floor. She's going to try and go coast to coast. Puts up the shot. It's a hook shot, and it goes through. 32-28. Lady Pirates lead. Under 30 seconds to play in the first half. Marcy Benedict up the right side of the floor. She's going to dribble down and was going to dribble to the corner. Gets a pick from Greenhall, and a, she's going to get the pass back from her. She's going to put it up and in. 32-30, Lady Pirates lead. Under five seconds. Three-point shot by Thomas. No good. Rebound by Greenhall, and that's how the first half will end. 32-30, Lady Pirates lead the Lady Bobcats. We want to let you know that the halftime show is brought to you by Allen's Grocery. And Allen's Grocery is located at Four Way and Summit. If you are looking for the best possible meats in this area, you want to get up there and check that out. Tony and Isaac will make sure that you're taken care of. They'll get you the best cut and whatever meat you want, and they'll get you taken care of. They also have the best groceries in town. You can get gas if you're there, if you need gas while you're there getting groceries. Check out Allen's Grocery at the uh, four-way in Summit. Well, in the first period, flipping led after one, 16 to 13, on a three-point shot late in the first period. And at the at the half, we've got 32-30 is your score by uh, Jasper as they scored a they had a run right there at the end of the first at the end of the first half. We'll be back after the music and we'll get you started with the second half.
All right, as we get this second half started, it'll be Jasper Lady Pirates with the basketball. Jaden Daniel or Jaden Middleton back on the floor. She's got three personal fouls. Daniels with the basketball. Middleton. Middleton will come back to the center of the floor and set up some, some semblance of offense. Willie Young with the basketball. And she'll dribble into the right corner. She'll have the ball knocked away. Allie Hodges on the floor fighting for the ball. And it's going to be flipping basketball as a jump ball is called. Hodges with some hustle there. Gets on the floor and fights for the possession. And DeGrasse now takes the basketball. She'll come in, come across the timeline, set up an offense. Greenhall with the basketball, hands it to Shelton. Shelton with the basketball now at the center of the court. Tries to get it into Hodges. It'll be tipped by Siebert. Middleton with the basketball. She'll lose it out of bounds, and it'll belong to. Looks like they're going to say the Lady Pirates have possession. Willa Young gets set to throw this in, gets it into Ralston. Ball will be knocked away by Pendergrass, and it'll belong to the Lady Pirates again on an inbound pass. Ball comes into Siebert. Siebert dribbles, tries to penetrate, gets it over to Jaden Middleton, and she tries to pass it down to... Number 22, Siebert, it'll go out of bounds off of her as Benedict knocked it away. Well, Lady Bobcats bring the ball across the timeline. Pendergrass finds Greenhall at the free throw line, gets it over to Shelton on cutting to the basket, and she makes it for an easy layup on the left-hand side. Ties the game at 32. Middleton comes back up the floor, and she's got three personal fouls. Willie Young now with the basketball. She'll dribble to the center of the floor, try to dribble and penetrate, and she's going to be hacked on her way in. We'll see who this foul's on. It'll be on Hodges, and that'll be her third personal foul. Middleton picked up three fouls in the first half. Ball will come in to Siebert. Siebert gets it cross court to Daniels. Daniels guarded by Shelton. She's looking inside, can't find Ralston. Greenhall with great defensive coverage, 24 seconds to shoot. Daniels will put up a shot from three-point range, and it'll fall over the front of the rim and through. 35-32 is your score, and the Lady Pirates lead this contest. We're in the second game of the Billy Ply Classic, girls' version. Greenhall now gets a pass from the inside, and while she's trying to gain possession of the ball, she – Travels with the basketball. Middleton brings this back up for the Lady Pirates. Flipping defense sets up. Siebert fumbles the ball, gets it back. Now she's guarded by Adrian Benedict. Nally steals the ball for the Lady Bobcats. She pulls it back out. Almost has it stolen. Gets it to Marcy Benedict over to Pendergrass. Pendergrass will get it to Shelton on the right side of the floor. She's going to put up a three-point shot. It's going to hit the rim, bounce around. Re rebounded by Adrian Benedict up and in on the right-hand side. 35-34, Lady Pirates lead. Daniels with the ball. Gets it into the corner for Young. And it'll be knocked out by the Lady Bobcats. Willie Young now with the basketball out at the center of the floor. Over to. She gets the ball to number 22, number 20. She'd gotten the ball to Middleton. Middleton got it down to Ralston. And a foul is going to be called against number two. It's going to be called on number five, Nally. That'll be her second personal foul. Ralston makes the first free throw. She's got one more. Score is 36-34. 5-16 remaining in the third period. She makes the second one, and it's 37-34. Lady Pirates lead. 
Pendergrass calls the play as she comes across the timeline. Now she dribbles to the right side, gets it to Marcy Benedict. She puts up a three-point shot that's off the right side. Rebound Ralston, outlet pass to Siebert. She puts up a shot, and it's too hard off the glass. Nally with the basketball. Nally gets it to Shelton. Shelton back down the floor, gets Ralston in the air, puts up a shot on the left side, and it's good. Lady Bobcats trail by one, 37-36. Daniels with the basketball, covered by Nally. Now we've got Willa Young putting up a heavy shot that comes off of the backboard. Shelton with the rebound over to Adrian Benedict. Adrian Benedict looked at driving the baseline. Now she passes it back to Shelton, puts up a three-point shot that's no good. Marcy Benedict will have the ball go out of bounds off of her. Now Thomas checks back in. And she will get the ball to Middleton, who gets it up the floor. Shelton with the steal for flipping. She's on the way back down the floor. She's going to up her dribble, get it to Marcy Benedict, to Adrian Benedict. Puts up a shot on the right side. It's no good. She tracks down her own rebound. Pendergrass with the basketball. She's going to get it inside the lane to Nally, and Nally will put up the shot and flipping will retake the lead, 38-37, with 3.55 remaining. Daniels with the basketball, tries to dribble and penetrate, loses the ball momentarily, gets it into Ralston. Ralston has the ball knocked away when she tries to make a pass. Now Middleton with the ball, tries to dribble and penetrate, gets down on the baseline, kicks it out. Siebert with the ball, has to pass it over to number 23. Breedlove, who's checked back in, and they're going to throw the ball away. It'll belong to the Bobcats. Greenhall will check back in as she'll check in for Nally. Nally's had a pretty good game here this afternoon. Benegrass will bring this ball up the floor. She's on the Bobcat, and now she's going to go to the right side of the floor. Picks up her dribble, passes it to Marcy Benedict. Over to Adrian Benedict. To Shelton inside the green hall, and there's going to be a foul called. Let's see who this foul is on. It'll be on number 30, Laney Daniels. That'll be her second personal foul of this ball game. Marcy Bennett gets set to throw this in. Gets it in the green hall, puts up a shot. It's no good. Marcy Benedict with the rebound. Adrian Benedict with the pass, and she gets it up and in on the right side. She's fouled. She's going to line count the bucket. Fouls on Middleton. That's her fourth personal foul. She's probably going to need to take a seat so she doesn't pick up that fifth one, but we hope they leave her in there. Adrian Benedict's free throw is up and off the back of the iron. No good. Rebounded by Daniels. Daniels back up the right side of the floor. Daniels being guarded by Marcy Benedict. They're trying to get it inside to Ralston and Greenhall is Got position, keeping her, keeping the pass from coming inside. They'll make Ralston shoot from the outside. Long rebound will be tipped by Marcy Benedict and picked up by Greenhall. Back to Marcy and now over to Ad uh, Shelton cutting toward the basketball goal from a pass from Pendergrass. 42-37, the Lady Bobcats have stretched the lead out. And we have 226 remaining in the third period. Lady Pirates on the other end. Ralston tries to dribble inside, and it looks like Greenhall is going to be called for a foul. Kenna Greenhall will be called for her third team foul, and it'll be the third team foul against Lady Bobcats. Daniels, Ralston, and Middleton will all check out. Greenhall check out, and Hodges check back in. Adrian Benedict is going to steal this as she turned around and saw the ball, grabbed it. She'll get the ball to Pendergrass, and Pendergrass is directing traffic. Pendergrass comes back towards the center of the floor. Now she's going to lose her dribble, and it'll be picked up by the Lady Pirates. She'll commit a foul. That'll be her second personal foul. Thomas will throw this in as she gets set to throw it into Willa Young. They'll throw it in in the backcourt. Young crosses the timeline in the center of the floor. 
Over to Thomas on the left side. And Thomas has number 23, Breedlove, in the corner, but elects to pass the ball off. Now it's going to be a loose ball, but picked up by Willa Young. Siebert tries to get inside the lane. He can't get, can't do it. Maggie Thomas is going to bury another three-pointer and scores 42-40 to 40 now. Lady Bobcats bring it back up. Pendergrass crosses the timeline, sets up the offense, goes to the right side. Now she's going to get a pick, and it gets to Hodges, and Hodges will step on the baseline as she tries to save the ball. She tried to save it, and it went out of bounds as she was as she was standing on the baseline. Ralston will check back into this game. And number 24, Willa Young. No. Number 21, Siebert will check out. Anyway, Thomas on the floor. She throws the ball into double coverage, and it's stolen. It'll be stolen by Marcy Benedict, brought back up the floor by Pendergrass. Pendergrass will find number 10 in the corner. Lily Daffron, she puts up a three-point shot. It's no good. Rebounded by the Pirates. Back down the floor. Sieber with the basketball. The rebound is going to come down to number 10, Daffron. Long outlet pass to Shelton. Shelton gives it off to Hodges. Hodges is going to get the basketball, put it up a shot. It's no good. And then we're going to have a foul by Shelton as she reached over. She reached over the Lady Pirates. It's the fifth team foul, so it will be a sh shooting foul. They'll be shooting fouls now at the other end. Ralston will be at the free throw line to shoot two. That is the first foul on Shelton. 42-40 flipping leads over Jasper. She misses the first free, free throw off of the back of the iron. Checking in now will be Daniels for Jasper. She'll make the second free throw, and it'll be a one-point ball game. Less than 30 seconds to play in the third period. Allie Hodges down low, puts up a shot on the right side. It's good. She did not have both feet out of bounds, and it's going to be a turnover right back to the Bobcats with 26.6 seconds. Bobcats will get this basketball and inbound it underneath their own goal. Ralston had stepped out with one foot and not the other. Referee saw it and called it. Now Flippin will have another shot right before the end of the quarter. Hodges with the ball. She's going to get the last four points for flipping in this third period. One from the right side and one from the left side. Both layups. Willie Young throws the ball inside, and I said the last four points. It may not be. Shelton all the way down the floor. Euro step. Puts the ball up and in. They're going to say no shot. The, the foul was on the floor. Siebert picks up her first foul of the ball game. Flipping will inbound underneath their own goal. 8.5 seconds remaining. Ball comes in. Now Pendergrass with the ball gets it to Benedict. Benedict drives the baseline, puts up a shot. It's no good. Shelton with the rebound up and in at the buzzer. Lady Bobcats with a seven point or six point run right there at the end of the quarter will retake the lead or push their lead out to 48-41. And we want to tell you about Jason Nazarenko and how he's running for the state representative in this area. He's not interested in let, being, being all about the, the that he's running for representative. He's interested in the fact that he does this. The kids from Flippin, the kids from Cotter, the kids from Yellow Summit, over to Ozark Mountain and Lead Hill, even – Bergman and Valley Springs deserve a right to have their uh, parents and extended family be able to watch this, and that's why he does this. So that's the real story on that. He does appreciate your vote, but he's doing it for the kids. We'll be right back.
We've got eight minutes to play. Jasper will have the ball to start the fourth period. The score is 48-41, flipping leads by seven on a, on a big run right there at the end of the third period. Ralston back to Daniels. Daniels, I'm sorry, Middleton over to Daniels. Around to Thomas. They can't get a shot off. They can't get it inside, so they're now Ralston with the ball. Inside, Jaden Daniels is going to put up a shot. A foul is going to be called. Well, at least that's why we've got a whistle, I think. Foul will be called. It'll be on Marcy Benedict. It'll be her first foul of the ball game. It will reset the shot clock to 35. Ralston with the ball, gets it to Daniels. Over to Middleton. Middleton looks inside. Now she's going to try and dribble and penetrate, puts up a shot. It's no good. Rebounded by Marcy Benedict. Pendergrass now will bring the ball up the floor on the left side. She looks inside. Now she's going to try and dribble and penetrate. Kicks the ball back out. We got a timeout by flipping. We'll take this timeout to tell you about Ben Gibson, attorney of law, over in Yaleville. If you've done something wrong or if you need some help, whether it be an adoption or whatever, call Ben Gibson over there on the square. He's right across from the courthouse, and he'll be glad to help you. Twisted Sisters here in Flippin'. Uh, if you need your haircut, I don't care if you're a man, woman, or child, if you need a, a simple haircut or if you need a real a real intensive perm, she can take care of that for you. Go in there and see Jennifer and her staff, and she'll get you all taken care of. Just look for the blue-green parking stops on Main Street in Flippin'. Carolyn's Razorback Ribs, if, if you are hungry and you need something for a quick lunch, get in there to Carolyn. She'll take care of you. She's got daily specials, and I promise she'll get you back to work before 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 your lunch break ends. She's right there on Highway 62 across from Sonic. Get, get in there, and she'll get you taken care of. Number 10, Lily Daffron gets set to throw this in. She'll get it into Pendergrass. Pendergrass cuts to the basketball over to Marcy Benedict to Shelton. Shelton will find Daffron in the corner, back over to Pendergrass, cross court to Benedict. To Benedict will dribble once, pass it cross court, over to Pendergrass, and she puts up a shot that's no good. Hodges saves the ball or tries to save the ball, and it falls just outside the baseline. Great hustle play there trying to save that ball. Daniels will bring it up. Daniels has four fouls and has to watch what she does. She'll bring the ball up on the right side over to Ralston. Ralston to Daniels. Daniels back to Middleton. Middleton looks to try to dribble and penetrate. Can't get in. Now she'll pass it off to Daniels. Daniels cut across the lane. Hits Thomas. Thomas puts up a three-point shot that's good. 48-44 is your score. It's a four-point lead with six minutes and 39 seconds to play. Shelton with the basketball. She'll get the ball down in the corner to Benedict or to uh, Daffron. Daffron will put up a three-point shot, and it's good. Pushes the lead out to 51-44, back to seven. Daniels, Ralston. Daniels dribbles and penetrates, puts up a shot on the left side. She'll cut the lead by two. It's 51-46, five points for flipping. Pendergrass comes up the right side of the floor. Now, She's going to stop and put up a shot from about eight feet out. It's good. 53-46, seven-point lead again for the Bobcats. Daniels tries to dribble and penetrate. She's guarded by Pendergrass. Now Middleton puts it, puts up a shot from about six feet out. It's good. Pendergrass, now she's going to face the full-court defense for the Pirates over to Pendergrass. From Shelton, out to Daffron. Daffron puts up another three-point shot. It's no good, and it's knocked out of bounds off of the Lady Bobcats. 5.36 to play, flipping with a 53-48 lead. Daniels now with the basketball. She'll bring it up the right side. Gets it over across court to Ralston, to Thomas. Thomas looks to try to penetrate, can't get inside. Siebert with the basketball. As she gets it over to Middleton, Middleton will find Ralston outside the three-point line on the right side. Greenhall is going to be called for another foul for reaching in. That's her fourth personal foul. Willa Young will check back in for Siebert for the Pirates. And they will inbound on the baseline. Middleton throws it into Daniels. Daniels at the top of the key. She'll find Middleton. We're going to have a 
We're going to have a foul called. We're going to see what this is. Maybe against flipping for pushing. It'll be on Benedict, Marcy Benedict, for, and it'll be her second personal foul. Third team foul already in this fourth period. Willie Young takes the inbounds pass. She'll try to dribble and penetrate. She'll be cut off by Allie Hodges. Ball's knocked away by Greenhall. Now the ball is knocked away by uh, number two, Pendergrass. Daniels puts up a three-point shot that's no good. Rebounded by Thomas and puts up a puts it right back up and up and in. 53-50, 441 to play. Pendergrass with the ball on the right side of the floor, right in front of her own bench. Dribbles the baseline, passes it. Gets intercepted by Willie Young. Back down the floor. They've got numbers. Two on one. Puts up the shot on the right side. It's up and in. 53-52. Lady Bobcats lead. Inbounds to Shelton. Shelton will dribble. Gives it to Hodges. Hodges will dribble now from left to right. Back to the left. Now we're going to finally have a foul called against Willie Young. She reached in three or four times, and finally a foul is called. It's the first foul against Young and the first team foul in this fourth period. Flipping will inbound just right here in front of the camera. Marcy Benedict gets set to throw it in. She gets it into Adrian Benedict. And then she'll trail Adrian back up the center of the floor. Adrian on the right side. She finds Greenhall cutting to the goal. Puts it up and in on the right-hand side. They'll push the lead back out to three. 55-52, 3.59 to play. Daniels cross court to Thomas. Thomas to Ralston. Ralston tries to dribble and penetrate against Greenhall. She's going to put up a shot. A foul's going to be called. If that's on Greenhall, that's number five. That is her fifth foul. She has fouled out of the game. Coach has to make a change. He has to pull her. Kenna Greenhall out because that's her fifth foul. Grant Greenhall has not decided who to put in yet. And now he'll send in Pendergrass. Ralston up the line to shoot two. First one to hit the front of the rim to the back and fall through. She'll have one more. She can't tie the game, but she can cut it to a one-point lead. She makes this. Flipping still leads by one, and they do. 55-54, three minutes and 50 seconds to play. We've got a timeout on the floor, and we'll take this timeout to tell you about North Arkansas College over in Harrison. If you are interested in going to college, but you don't know what you want to do yet, give them a call. They can help you out with that. They can find out what your interests are and find out how quickly you want to go to work or if you want to go to a four-year college. They've got a knack for that over in Harrison. Just give them a call and they'll uh, or visit North Arc, ED, uh, North Arc EDU and they can get you taken care of. We'll be back after the music. And back here with the final 350 of the game. Shelton throws this into Hodges. Hodges will look to dribble. 
back up the floor. She's going to be guarded by Ralston. She gets the ball to hide, uh, Shelton. Shelton will kick it out to Marcy Benedict. She'll put up a three-point shot. It's no good. It'll be rebounded by Daniels. I'm sorry, Middleton. Middleton back up the right side of the floor to Maggie Thomas in the corner. Ralston straight away three-pointer. It's going to rattle out and be rebounded by Pendergrass. Pendergrass will get it over to Marcy Benedict. She'll bring it back up the center of the floor. Picked up by Thomas. She'll find Shelton cutting towards basket, but too far under it for a shot. Adrian Benedict will put a three-point shot up that's no good. Almost gets to a rebound. Daniels rebounds it. Back down the floor for the Jasper Lady Pirates. She's going to get all the way to the goal. Put it up and in on the right-hand side to push the Jasper Pirates back to a one-point lead, 56-55. Allie Hodges passes the ball up the floor, and it'll be stolen by Daniels. Ralston with the basketball. She's going to put up a 12-footer. It's off the rim, no good. Rebounded by Pendergrass. Pendergrass finds, uh, throws an outlet pass to Hodges. It's too far out in front of her, and she can't quite get there. Ball will be... Belong to the uh, Lady Pirates. Middleton will get set to throw this into Daniels. Daniels will bring it back up the left side of the floor. She finds Ralston in the corner on the left side. Ralston will dribble back to the center, begging somebody to come to her, and Jasper's going to call timeout. Timeout with 2.27 remaining in the ballgame. Jasper leads 56-55, and we'll tell you about Sims Auction. Sims Auction, if you're doing a real estate, if you've got if you got some stuff to auction off and it's real estate, give uh, Hunter Sims a call. He'll take care of you and get your get the most you can possibly get for your property uh, here in this area. So give him a call over at Yellville. We want to remind everyone that we're doing the Holla Dazzle Parade here in Flippin' at 4.30. Uh, that's going to be brought to you by Sam Pasting Law here in, or here in um, Flippin'. You want, a, you want a good lawyer, get up there and check that out. Sam Pacing will take care of you. This Holla Dazzle Parade is going to be a phenomenal event. Uh, it grows every year, and it probably will be one of the most spectacular things we've seen in a while. So if you can't get out there, make sure you tune in to Echo Sports 4034 on YouTube, and we will make sure that you, can, you get to see it. We'll be right back. Back here and flipping at the Billy Ply Classic, the girls' version. Middleton will take the inbound pass for Jasper. Jasper she'll pass the ball to Siebert. Siebert will be guarded by Shelton. Shelton will make her, make her pick up her dribble and then pass the ball off to Thomas. Thomas is guarded by Benedict. Hodges is guarding Ralston. Ralston will take it all the way to the rim, but she's not going to make the shot. It will be rebounded by Hodges. Pendergrass will bring the ball back up the floor. Two minutes to play in this ball game. One point game. Jasper leads 56-55. Pendergrass is going to almost lose her dribble. Then Ralston's going to steal the ball, but it's going to be a foul. They're going to call this against Allie Hodges, but she had as much right to the ball as Ralston did, but this is going to send Ralston back to the free throw line. 151 remaining. She's going to have two shots. Be the fourth foul called against Allie Hodges. Ralston will miss the first free throw as it'll rattle out of the rim. Daniels will check back into this game for Thomas, for Jasper. Ralston will have her second shot, and it'll be up. Hits the front of the rim, rolls to the glass, and falls through. Adrian Benedict gets the ball into Pendergrass to Shelton. Shelton up the left side of the floor. She's going to pick up her dribble. Now she's going to throw it into Hodges. Hodges is going to get a shot on the right side. Easy layup. 57-57 is the score. 137 to play. Willa Young. Travel is going to be called again. Middleton, as she took the pass from Young, it was a heavy pass, and it's going to cause her to travel with the possession of the ball. Timeout on the floor. We want to thank all of our sponsors here today. Extra Regional brings you the broadcast each week. 
Odd Enterprises. Make sure that this is about the kids. Dozier and Associates, again, about the kids. Allen's Grocery wants to make sure that you can find the, find the groceries you need at the price you need. Jason Nazarenko wants to make sure all of these kids have a platform. Ben Gibson, if you need any help there, he's an attorney in Yellville. He'll take care of you. Twisted Sisters, they'll get you the best hair care and best nail care that you can possibly need. Carolyn's Razorback Ribs will get you fed and back to, back to work on time. North Arkansas College, if you need a degree, or want to get a technical degree, you get out there and check that out. And they've got a knack for that. Sims Auction over in Yellville will take care of all of your auction needs and get you taken care of there. Sam Pasting, he's going to sponsor our Holodazzle Parade here at 430. And we just want to make sure that everybody has a chance to watch that. Lippin's going to inbound this ball with 133 remaining, all tied up at 57. Ball's going to come into Shelton. Shelton will come up the right side of the floor. She'll be double teamed, pick up her dribble, cross court to Pendergrass. Pendergrass was across the timeline. Coach thought she was it was a, uh, over and back, and it wasn't. Shelton gets it to Pendergrass. She's outside the three-point line, gets it down to Hodges. They're going to call that a, 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 a block. There's not very many flipping fans that was happy about that, and justifiably, it looks like. Looked like more of a foul. Pirates will bring it in. Middleton comes up the center of the floor. Now she'll pass the ball to Ralston. Ralston guarded by Hodges. She pushes off. No call. Now a clean block. We'll see who they call this on. Foul's going to be on Pendergrass. It'll be her third personal foul, sixth team foul. And Ralston will be at the line to shoot for two free throws. Misses the first one off the back of the iron. She can only make it a one-point lead. She can not She can still push them into the lead, but it'll only be a one-point lead if she, if she makes this one. Second shot is up. She misses that, too. It's still tied. Hodges with the rebound over to Shelton. Shelton brings it back up the left side of the floor. She's guarded by Daniels. Daniels has four fouls. She pu pushes it up, and she's going to be called for her fifth foul. Middleton will be out of this ball game with her fifth foul. Shelton pushed that all the way to the rim, and she drew the foul against Middleton. That'll be her fifth. She's gone. Checking back in will be Thomas. Shelton will be at the free throw line to shoot two free throws. 54.9 seconds. We're all tied at 57. Flipping can retake the lead. She missed the first free throw, but she's got one more. Flipping can retake the lead if they can make this free throw, if Shelton makes it. Second one is up, and it's in. 58-57, a one-point lead for Flipping. Ball's going to be knocked away from Young. Then she's going to regain it, put up the shot. It's going to go out of bounds. Ralston tries to save it, but it's all for naught as Flippin will inbound on the baseline. Allie Hodges has the ball. She gets it inside to Pendergrass. Pendergrass will be pushed out of bounds, no call. And uh, Ralston will grab the basketball and put up an easy layup. 38, 37 seconds remaining. Flippin down by one with the ball. Pendergrass will dribble to the left side of the floor, finds Hodges cutting to the basket. Now she's going to back her way in, put up a shot. She's not going to make it, but Ralston's going to be called for the foul. Ralston is also going to be, appears to be hurt. She's not getting up quickly. We're going to not, not guess on what this might be, but she didn't. She has still not gotten up. It was a heavy, there was heavy contact there, and she met a good foul. It will send Hodges to the free throw line. We'll take a break right here. We'll stay, we'll keep it here as she's been helped up and she's being helped off the floor, mostly on her own power. She 
does receive applause from the fans. Charlie Breedlove looks like she's going to check in for her. Now she's made her way off the floor now, and Charlie Breedlove has checked in for her. the Lady Pirates. Flippin has a one-point lead, or I'm sorry, Jasper has a one-point lead, and Allie Hodge is at the line to shoot two free throws. 23.5 seconds remaining. Hodge is at the line to shoot two. Here's her first one. It's up off the rim. She can tie the game with the second free throw. 23.5 left in the ball game. Second free throws up and in. 59-59. Flipping ties the ball game up. Daniel or Willa Young rather with the basketball comes up center of the floor to the right. She gets the ball over to Siebert. Siebert, we've got a timeout called by Jasper. Jasper. We'll take this time out to tell you that we want to thank all of our sponsors here today. Even uh, Sam Pacing, who's sponsoring the Holodazzle Parade here in Flippin at 430. Sims Auto uh, Sims Auction. North Arkansas College, Carolyn's Razorback Ribs, Twisted Sister, Ben Gibson, Jason Nazarenko, Allen's Grocery, Dozier and Associates, Terry and Darlene Odd at Odd Enterprises, and Baxter Regional Medical Center brings you this broadcast each time we're on. We want to thank all of our sponsors and let you know that they care about these kids, and that's why they do this. They want to give them a platform to play on. We'll be right back. Jasper's going to inbound on their own offensive end of the floor with 17 seconds remaining in a tie ball game, 59-59. Ball comes into Willow Young. Young gets it over to Siebert, and Siebert's going to hand it back to Young. Young looks for somebody to pass the ball to. Ball's going to go out of bounds off of Siebert. It's going to belong to Flippin right here at the midcourt. Allie Hodges tipped the ball. It fell off of Siebert and went out of bounds as she had a hold of it on the baseline or on the sideline. We've got a full timeout from flipping. 4.5 seconds remaining. 59-59. We'll be right back after the music. All right, we're back. We're the final 4.5 seconds of the regulation. 
Ball's going to be inbound. It has to go into. They're going to. They found Hodges right next to the goal. The shot is up. It's no good. Rebound is going to be picked up by Pendergrass, but it doesn't make any difference. She can't get a shot off. So we're going to have overtime here in flipping at the Billy Ply Classic in the second game. We'll be right back after the music. All right, we're back here for overtime. Second overtime contest of the year. Both of them have been played here at Flippin'. One during the Arvis Tournament, now the, during the Billy Ply Classic. Hodges will get set to tip this off against Siebert. Got some confusion now with the, with the officials. Not sure what's going on, but we're going to get this all worked out and get this underway. I keep looking at the clock. Maybe about the timeouts because it, they so they show one timeout for flipping and two timeouts for. Jasper, I believe they both should have the same amount of timeouts. Oh, they're going to say the fouls are the issue here. As they put the number of fouls that they had in the fourth period back on the scoreboard. So Jasper's in the bonus already, and Flippin needs to have Jasper foul twice before they're in the bonus. Here's the opening tip for overtime. Hodges will miss the ball, but it will be controlled by Adrian Benedict. So Flippin will control the first possession of the of the overtime period. Pendergrass finds Adrian Benedict over to Hodges. Hodges will dribble and penetrate, and she's going to be fouled. It'll be on the floor, so it won't be a shooting foul. It'll be the second personal foul called against Siebert. But it will be the fourth foul, and the next one we'll send flip into the free throw line. Marcy Benedict gets set to throw this in, gets it into Pendergrass. She'll get it over to Adrian Benedict, back to Marcy Benedict. Out to Shelton. Shelton will look inside, can't find anybody, puts up a three-point shot. It's off the back of the rim. Adrian Benedict comes down with the rebound, and it'll be knocked away from her by Daniels. Flipping on inbound in front of their own bench. Shelton will take the inbounds pass. Dribble to the center floor, stop, pick up her dribble, and she will travel. Still tied at 59, three minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the overtime period. Siebert with the basketball. She'll hand it off to Daniels. Daniels tries to dribble and penetrate, puts up a shot. It's off the glass, and it's good. 61-59. Jasper leads. Shelton with the basketball. She's going to lose it out of bounds off of her own toes. 
Jasper will inbound. Siebert will throw this in. She's going to get this in to Young. Young will bring it back up the center of the floor over to Siebert. Now Siebert will dribble to the left over to Daniels. Daniels is going to dribble and penetrate. Puts up a shot that was partially tipped and in for the basket. 63-59, four-point lead for the Lady Pirates. Pendergrass drives all the way to the goal, puts up a shot. It's no good. It'll be tracked down. The long rebound will be tracked down by Siebert over to Young. Young will back up the floor. She'll pass to the right to Daniels. Daniels looks at a three and decides not to take it. Now back to Daniels from Young. Young will try, or Daniels will try to dribble and penetrate. She'll be cut off by Shelton. Now Young dribbles and penetrates. Can't make the shot. Shelton will pick up the loose ball off the pass from Pendergrass. Marcy Benedict will be will go in for a shot, go to the floor, and she was fouled hard, and she's down. We'll take a quick break right here. Benedict made it to the bench under her own power, and we will have Lily Daffron checking in for her, and she will shoot the free throws. She will shoot two, two free throws, down by four points with two minutes and six seconds remaining in the overtime period. Daffron gets the ball from the official, puts up the shot. It's off the back of the iron, and it's no good. She'll have one more shot here. It's off the back of the iron. No good. Rebounded by Siebert. Siebert brings it back up the center of the floor. Left to the left to Daniels. Daniels will look inside. Daniels will lose the ball, but it'll be right to Young. Young will. She was trying to make a pass, and it was tipped away. 17 on the shot clock. We've already had two shot clock violations. Daniels is cut off. Now Siebert has a line to the goal, and Hodges will knock that ball away. Unfortunately, it goes out of bounds, but Hodges with the big block right there knocks it away. That will not reset, reset the shot clock. It'll be eight seconds to shoot. Siebert gets the ball in, and it's going to be contested by Shelton Young. Puts up a quick, quick three-point shot. It's no good, and Lily Daffron will come down with a rebound, and that'll be the fifth foul against the Jasper Lady Pirates in this period. Thomas will pick up the foul. It'll be her second personal foul as she was over the back of Daffron. Daffron will go back to the line to shoot two. One thirty-two remaining, 63-59 is your score. First free throws up and in. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Daffron. 63-60. She'll cut it to two if she makes it, but she doesn't make it. Siebert with the rebound, gets it out of there, clears it. Down to Young. Young will look to try to get it to Daniels, and she finally does. Timeout for Jasper. 123 remaining in the in the ball in the uh, overtime period. Jasper leads by three. Again, we want to thank all of our sponsors here. We're going to thank Baxter Regional Medical Center, Odd Enterprises, Dozier and Associates, Allen's Grocery. 
Jason Nazarenko, Ben Gibson, Twisted Sisters, Carolyn's Razorback Ribs, Sims Auction, and for our Holodazzle Parade today, we want to thank uh, Sam Pasting for being our principal sponsor for the parade here this afternoon. We'll be right back. Time out is concluded. We've got 123 remaining in this overtime period. 26 seconds to shoot. Young with the basketball on the inbound pass. Barely got it in in time. Now Young needs to do something with this, set up some offense or something. She picks up her dribble. Got nobody to pass it to. Finds Thomas back to Young. Adrian Benedict is on her. Ball's knocked away. Picked up by Allie Hodges. Allie Hodges back up the center of the floor. Thomas comes over all the way to the goal. She puts it up and in on the right side. 63-62, one-point game, under a minute to play. Jasper with the basketball, 31 on the shot clock. Young with the basketball. She's guarded by Adrian Benedict. Now it's going to be, again, the ball is lost out of bounds. They're going to say it went off the of flipping, but that looked like it rolled straight out of bounds and between the legs of Lily Daffron but they're going to say it was touched by flipping on the way out. 21 seconds remaining on the shot clock, 39.8 left in the overtime period. We've got a timeout on the floor. We'll take this timeout and be right back. All right, with 21 seconds left on the shot clock, 39.8 seconds remaining in the overtime period. Jasper's set to throw this in. Thomas gets it in, and it's going to be stolen by Shelton. Then a foul committed. Thomas is going to commit the foul. It's going to send Flip into the free throw line with a chance to take a one-point lead at 38.4 seconds remaining. She tried to throw it off of the back of a you know, uh, flipping player, and it went out of bounds off of – or was picked up by flipping, and then a foul was committed by Thomas. That is her third foul of this ball game. Shelton hits the back of the rim and out. She can make this one and tie it at 63. Second shot's up off the back of the iron. It's no good. The rebound comes to Thomas over to see uh, Young. Young will bring it back up the center of the floor. They, they, they will have to shoot this before the end of, before time runs out. Pendergrass is going to go to the floor. Foul is going to be called on number 21, Allie Hodges. It will be her fifth foul. She will foul out of this game, and Allie will come back in for her. Seaver will be at the line to shoot two free throws and a one, with a one-point lead. 23.9 seconds remaining. 
She hits the front of the rim and it falls off. No good. We've got a timeout on the floor and we'll take the timeout with them. Sabre will be at the line to shoot two free throws. Or shoot one free throw, rather. And she'll push the lead 64-62. Pendergrass will take the inbound pass. Young tried to steal it. Went up too early. 18 points, 18 seconds remaining. Pendergrass gets the ball to Shelton. Shelton in the center of the floor at the top of the three-point line. Adrian Benedict. Now Pendergrass is going to drive inside. They're going to Call a blocking foul, it looks like. If they call that blocking foul, it'll be on Young. It is on Young, and it will be her second personal foul, but it'll send Pendergrass to the free throw line. She can make both of these and tie the game with 6.5 seconds remaining. First one's up and in. She'll have one more free throw. Second free throw is up, and it's in. Tie ball game with 6.5 seconds remaining. Ball is stolen by Pendergrass. She puts up a long three-point shot. No good. We're going to double overtime. We're set to tip off here for to start this opening of the second overtime between the Lady Bobcats and the Lady Pirates in the Billy Ply Classic. Jumping will be Adrian Benedict and Siebert. Ball is in the air, and it's going to be controlled by Flip and Pendergrass with the ball off of the Benedict tip. Shelton now with the basketball. She's going to dribble back towards the center of the floor. Get it to Benedict. Out to Daffron. Daffron puts up a three-point shot. She drains the bottom of the bucket. 67-64. Flippin takes control of the second overtime. Young. She'll get the ball to Daniels. Daniels tries to dribble and penetrate. She loses the ball, and Pendergram comes up with it. Possession will belong to Jasper. 
We've got three minutes and 31 seconds, and Flippin has a three-point lead in this ball game in the second overtime here at the Billy Ply Classic in the second game. I guess twos are wild. Second game, second overtime. The only thing that the only thing that's not there is flipping leading by two. Three point shot is missed. Rebound by Thomas. She misses that. Nally comes down with the rebound over to Pendergrass. Pendergrass doesn't see Shelton, but she's got her on an outlook outlook pass. Now Pendergrass will dribble into the left side. Gets it inside to Nally. Nally's going to have her defender fall down, but they're going to call traveling on Nally. They're going to call Nally for traveling there. It'll turn the ball back over to Jasper. Siebert's going to throw this into Young. Young will take the inbound. Comes straight up the court. She'll be guarded by Benedict. Ball's knocked away. Ball's loose on the floor. And we've got a whistle. We've got a whistle for I'm not sure if there was a foul called or what there was. I guess it was an inadvertent whistle, but Flippin, ha Flippin does have the ball. Benedict will throw this in. She gets it into Shelton in the backcourt. Shelton will be guarded by Daniels. Daniels gets picked by Nally. We've got a three-point shot by Daffron that's going to be off the mark. Ball's on, ball was loose on the floor, and then Daniels picked it up, got it to Siebert. Siebert over to Young, and she puts up a three-point shot off the back of the iron, rebounded by Shelton. Shelton comes up the right side of the floor. Shelton back towards the center to Pendergrass. She'll find Pendergrass, and she'll go to the right side. Benedict with the basketball now out at the top of the key. Over to Shelton. Shelton will get it back to Benedict, almost stolen by Daniels. Now Daniels will make her bounce it off of her foot, and it'll be over and back. Ball comes in. Young will bring it up the floor. She's guarded by Benedict. Ralston has not been in this game since she got hurt. Benedict is hurt for, well, she's coming back into this ball game, and she's going to check in for Daffron. Marcy Benedict is back on the floor. Ralston still hasn't come back into this ball game, sitting over there with ice. Adrian Benedict gets set to throw this in. She finds Shelton, who cuts towards her. Shelton's going to be double teamed in the backcourt, and she's going to find uh, Pendergrass at the other end of the floor, dribble it down. Marcy Benedict with the basketball. They're going to call her for traveling. They're going to call her for traveling. Flipping Lady Bobcats lead this ball game 67 64 with 141 to play in double overtime. Young passes it across the timeline to Siebert. Back to Young. Now Siebert with the basketball. Dally went for the steal. Didn't get it. Ball down in the corner for the Pirates. Young with a three-point shot ties the game. Marcy Benedict gets set to throw this in. She'll get it into Pendergrass. To Marcy Benedict back up the center of the floor. She brings it up. Now she goes to the left. And she's going to find Shelton cutting towards the basketball goal. Ball's knocked away, picked up by Pendergrass. Bobcats have numbers. Shelton puts up a short jumper. Rebounded by Nally. Nally will get it to Marcy Benedict. Back out to Pendergrass. Pendergrass will get it over to Shelton. And Shelton will dribble into the lane. Kick it out to Marcy Benedict over her head and out of bounds. 50 seconds remaining. We're all tied up at 67 in double overtime. They've retrieved the ball. Siebert's going to throw this in. She's going to be guarded by Adrian Benedict. She's got almost bumble. She she should have been. Done. It looked like a double dribble, at least according to the fans. No call. And now we're going to have Siebert with the ball to Thomas. Thomas in the corner, left corner. She'll get it out to Young. Young's going to try to dribble it. He 
kicked by Adrian Benedict. Ball was thrown into her foot. Seabrook gets set, throws in, gets it into Young. She's guarded by Benedict, Adrian Benedict. Mar Marcy comes out. Nally, all the way to the goal. They're going to call. It looks like they're going to call Nally for a foul, but that was a really soft foul. That'll send Seabrook to the free throw line to shoot two. We're all tied up at 67, 24.9 seconds remaining. Siebert's first free throw is up. <laughs> it's good. She'll have one more free throw with Jasper leading by 68 to 67. She'll make the second one, and the lead is 2, 69-67 with 24.9 seconds. We want to thank all of our sponsors and let you know for sure that this brought, was brought to you by Baxter Regional Medical Center, and they bring you every broadcast. They're over on Hospital Drive and Mountain Home. Be right back. All right, we're back here in Flippin' with the Billy Ply Classic in the second game. With We're in double overtime where Jasper leads 69-67 over Flippin'. Cadence Pendergrass brings the ball up the floor. She'll come across the timeline to the right side of the floor, guarded by Young over to Mar uh, Marcy Benedict. She'll dribble and get the ball into Nally. And a foul is going to be called on Thomas. That'll be Thomas's fourth foul if it is on her. It will be her fourth personal foul. And it will be the uh, it'll be foul. Nally at the line to shoot two. Makes the first one, makes it a one-point game with 10.3 seconds. 10.3 seconds, a one-point game, 69-68. Misses the second one. Ball's going to go out of bounds off of Marcy Benedict. Jasper Pirates leading by one. We'll have the ball with 9.1 seconds remaining. Nally guards the inbound. Young takes the inbound pass. Guarded by Benedict. Back down the floor to Daniels. Daniels will be tied up. Daniels is going to be tied up. She didn't realize what was going on. Flippin has possession. They will inbound the ball. Smart play by Flippin there to tie her up and gain possession of the basketball. She left the basketball wide open to be grabbed. Shelton takes the inbound pass, puts up a wild shot. It's no good. Final score, 69-68. Flipping will fall here at the Billy Ply Classic to Jasper. We'll be back with you when we get over to the uh, Holodazzle, Cla the Holodazzle Parade, and we thank you for tuning today. 69-68 is your final. After first period, Flippin led 16-13. At halftime, Jasper led 32-30. And Flippin led 48-41 after the third period. And 69-68 is your final. 